put in a space like that. Yeah. I don't know. I believe with you. And tonight's Concon meeting is being reported to RCT. You can see it on Comcast Channel 22 or Verizon Channel 33. The video tonight's meeting is on And you can check www.rctv.org for more information and for replay times. Uh, the first item on the agenda is a continuation of Meadowbrook Golf Club. Um, so, Chuck, can we do... Uh, did you have something that we could sign? No, not, not Meadowbrook. I have uh, I've prepared the Certificate of Compliance for um, 738 Pearl Street, uh, Fitzgerald's. Right. And I had a few conversations with uh, Michael, and we're all set on the granite of the stone bounds at the two corners of the property. We've eliminated the rebar, the need for rebar in between. And then on the stone wall, on a substantial rock, they're going to glue on one more plaque that says conservation area. Okay. So that's what we agreed to. So with that, I did uh, prepare a certificate of compliance. And, and Mike did give me his word that he would uh, have that done, and he would contact me to uh, inspect it when it's okay. finished. And we took a uh, site inspection on Monday and took a, took a look at that area. We thought he had these big stakes in the middle of the grass. He was going to put rebar, and, and there was a, a fence up on the left-hand side, and then there was a stone wall on the right-hand side. And also, you know, along the back, but also going up along the stone wall towards Pearl Street. So we thought, you know, something over on this side, and then on the right-hand side on a, um, on a stone, and then, then maybe one more going up. And you know, we, Chuck brought up a pretty good point. You not, might not want to have a rebar right in the middle of the kids are out playing games and stuff in the yard. So as far as as goes. Have to, you know, are going to be in the wrong location? I mean, it's going to be extremely apparent, so I'm not that concerned about it. Yeah, it's wide open grass, you know. So, it, the iron rod. It doesn't say granite bound on the fence side. It says iron rod, and, it, and on the stone wall side, it doesn't go out to the stone wall because we didn't want to do anything in the center. Yeah, I kind of remember it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's not perfect, but it, it's just to alert whoever the next conservation person is and commission that, you know, be on the lookout 25 feet from these marks, there's there's a weapon. Yeah. And, and the way this yard was set up, there's no there's a convenient spot no. out there. So I, I don't step. Um, I make a motion to issue a certificate of compliance for three uh seven eight thirty eight. Seven thirty eight Pearl Street. Do we hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Of intent 
for uh, 1260 to 1264 Main Street, Lot 3, Map 45, Lot 104 and 106, Mass Equity Investors, and Lot 4, Lots 4 and 5. Um, is now being opened and being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Mass Wetlands Protection Act, Mass General Laws. Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended in the Reading General Bylaws, Section 7.1. Hearing is conducted in the following manner. Applicant presents a proposal. Commission will receive support and three reports from administrators, technical advisors, and other town departments. And commission will address questions and comments to the applicant. And the public will be given the opportunity to ask questions. Um, at this time, I'd like to introduce the members of the Conservation Commission on starting on my left. Uh, Chuck Taroni, Conservation Administrator. Michael Flynn. Rebecca Longley, Chair. David Panette. David Neumeyer. Carl Sacconi. Thank you. Um, for the record, my name is John Tony. I'm here with Jackie Wells from Mass Equity to see the applicant. Yeah. Um, this is a continued public hearing for lots three, four, and five. Veterans Way. Um, real quick. Lots four and five, there's no changes. We, we did speak about them, but lot three had some changes. You know, I'll go through those changes. I did have plans. I'll like submit. Um, and I'll go through those modifications. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
that specific change, we, we focus on a lot of three. Those are the four changes we made. I think improve it from the previous plan. Again, a lot four, which we have there, a lot five. No change proposed to the previous plans we submitted. Is that really no comments we got for those lots? I have a question. I have a question on this. You, uh, I know it was mentioned in the last meeting. You discharging the, the uh, got a leader from the northeast corner of the ho house where the garage is into the retention basin. So the driveway with this car had to be So the driveway will sheet towards the, the basin. Okay. Right All right. But not the roof run anymore. Okay. Well, no. What about the the roof where the garage is? The front of the, oh, the garage. garage. So we picked up. The front, the way is the front should be discharged to the infiltration system here in the back of this. It may do it either way. The plumbing is 50 50. Yep. It may put one this way. <coughs> the divider goes this way, that way. It depends on the roof okay. line, but yep. equal balance. Okay. Quick question about um, I see you placed a couple trees between the path and the house. Correct. Uh, appreciate that addition. Um, is there just I don't know the answer to this, that's why I'm asking. Is there an actual easement that's going to be um, ultimately surveyed on onto this lot, or is that just an agreement? Help, help me understand. Yeah, yeah. That's easement. Surveys a trail are, easement, like a. Oh, so is, yeah. is there actually? So I know I see the setbacks. Right. So trail is going to be basically in this easement E through here, and this, I think it's C D E. Oh, I see. Okay. So which is a future roadway, but that's where the trail will be in there somewhere, and we're going to work with the trail committee to, you know, avoid cutting trees down any larger well, let's work around that. So is this may not be the actual path, but it's going to work in there. Right. It it's, sits inside that. I just want to understand the actual line of easement E, actual limit, you know, the lot. Okay, so that's in here, and it runs, the dash line runs like this. I have an annotator, I can't really read it here. I it see it's up like that. Oh, it's this one right here. It's that one, okay, yep. It's it runs off of the, it, it the, with the so it's line. the dash line. Right. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. The long dash line. It's this one. Yeah. The one that looks more unnatural. We have a lot of nice lines. It's 60 foot wide. It goes onto a lot two next to it. It's for the future roadway. If it's ever built, you know, I don't know if the that happen because it is private property owned to this town of Reading. Mm -hmm. But it is there. It's somewhere in there that trail will sit um, based on topography and avoiding trees and holes. Okay. So it's my understanding that um, Ryan, first of all, our engineer, hasn't reviewed the drainage? He he hasn't. He reviewed it when it came in as a roadway. He hasn't reviewed it now that the houses are actually placed in these positions and that the sizes and um, the drainage from the roof and all that. But I did, I did talk to him. He felt, he felt that it would take an incredibly big house to change what he thought that that drainage um, system could handle. But he's willing to review it. And uh, as a matter of fact, I did talk to John too, who will, is going to call Ryan, and Ryan's going to, after their conversation, Ryan will probably just issue a memo saying that he. Uh, how, he's, how he feels about the drainage system. So we'll have something official by the next meeting. So we can either close it or we can continue. I would suggest we continue just for the sake of getting, <laughs> getting that information. <laughs> well, it's, it's fine. I mean, I, if. Yeah. If everything's just fine, gonna fine prepare the I anticipate it is. But if it, if I don't if think there this need to be adjustments, right. but if there need to be adjustments, I mean, if it's closed, we're hands are tied. Yeah, so uh, I think sorry. that's fine. So it's do I hear it? Uh, okay. gonna you're gonna at least prepare the order of conditions. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, before I I keep going, John. Yeah, one last thing to do. Uh, I'll write a letter to Ryan. Yeah. About I'll include lots one and two because I it's kind of jurisdiction, but I include those in my calculations to see that. 
I mean, I just focused on the three, four, five. Yeah. As a whole, plus three, four, five, one through five, we be considered the letter. I think we can yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Are there any comments from the audience? Jack, you all set? Uh, no. I wanted just to add one thing. We sure. just want to uh, boost up the um, monitoring of the site. And just to get a little more, because uh, what we have is biannual now, and with like once, like once a month uh, inspection around the erosion control of all, of all three lots. So I'm going to ask for all three lots each, as we close each one, um, and anywhere in the buffer zone. And this is during construction. During construction. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So one, once a month. is that acceptable? Yeah. Once a month. Yeah. That's fine. Do I hear a motion to? I move we continue. Second. Second. All those in favor. But in the interim, you're going to put the end of the order. Do you want to? Do you want to close? Um, are you closing all three? Or are you closing just lot three? I would move to and close all three. What was your motion? For? I, my motion was to continue lot three. Yeah, that's what I thought. So we're and only. So the other side. Sorry, sorry, I didn't specify. So when you that. do this, can you can you say the? For lot three. Yeah. You know, as a matter of fact, I'm probably going to add. We have uh, file numbers for lot three, four, and five. Oh, we do. John, do you have I think five still has a fee. Oh, this is two family. Okay. We haven't got a number yet for that one. Can you give me uh, three and four, though, if you have those? Oh, you have those items. If not, I can look it, I can look it up. No, I don't have the, uh, the uh, I have file five. numbers. No. Then, then when you close, just say lot three, four, and five. We'll add the numbers later. That would be enough. That's all right, John. Yeah. Has there been a determination for lot five yet? So I hear a motion to continue uh, lot four. Three. We did that. We just oh. And you can clarify that that was for lot three. Okay. I make a motion to continue for lot four. Second. All those in favor? Make a motion to continue on for lot five. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. Chuck, do you want two more? Ah. Uh, I, I do need two, so it's good. Uh, I think I got a new one. Oh. Unless they substantially increase the size of the house, we won't have any big changes for the cost of the easement, right? In theory. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, 7.15, we have a request for determination of applicability. 2018-430 uh, Glenmere Circle, map 15, lot 96, Windsor. Do we have anybody here? No, we don't. This is in I'm surprised. I thought he was going to be here. I did too. site visit and this is uh, basically a, a backyard um, and there are several trees uh, that they want to remove and some shrubbery uh, and, and the, the description of some of the trees uh, is a little misleading um, they're saying that they're all, you know, in, in tough, many of them are in tough condition. We did see some um, some trees that had fallen down. One was just a, a, a stump. But the many, and, and what was nice about this though, they really labeled all the trees they were talking about with these nice letters on them so you could really see what helps. Yeah, you know, the orange around those. A lot of the trees on the right-hand side appeared to be fairly healthy. Um, and some of the trees were labeled maples when they were clearly oaks. Um, yeah. 
Hmm? An ash. I don't see an ash. But anyways, on the left hand side, um, there was a, a triple trunked tree that had the largest vine of poison ivy I've ever seen. It was this thing. Yeah, it was astonishing. It yeah, looked it like was. a tree, another tree. I just took it for a treat. Yeah, qualified for the uh, tree policy. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was ginormous. Um, so you know, yes, the gentleman has small kids, and, and he's concerned about you know them getting into the poison ivy. Um, there is a the other thing on that the plan is there was a queue. It wasn't identified on the write up, but it actually is a um, mature maple tree. And there's a, a line of shrubs that they want to take out on the left-hand side as well. So, so um, any idea of proximity to the resource area? Yeah. It is resource area. <laughs> no, no. Oh. CM? Yeah. M and K? Yeah, that's, so that's, a, that's maybe, a wet one. Maybe M and J. So right where the, the drainage easement line is? Right. And Funny how that works. It, it, or the, the, the grass is right up to, you know, all of a sudden, mm -hmm. um, jewel weed and skunk, oh yeah, skunk cabbage. <laughs> so, yeah, it's pretty. Okay. So is A, I'm just, I guess it is. A is within 100 feet. A's down. A is a, 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 yeah, a, a was. Do you have your, oh yeah, do you have your, can we go through each one? A is a stump. Right. A is a stump and B is a stump. Yeah. Like okay. 16 inches, 18 inches. Yeah, stump. can we just go through the list of like yeah. what you thought about each one? And, and sure. There's probably some simple ones that we don't even need to talk about. I know that J is uh, substantial, healthy, substantial and healthy. J was the one that was broken in half. Was oh, is that the one they could make the canoe out of? Yeah. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah half trunk, yeah, half trunk, start, still yeah. standing, yeah. storm, uh -huh. no replace. Yeah, that one, we agree with that one. So, well, wait a minute. Well, let's, let's, start, let's start from the beginning. J. A, let's go with A. Yeah, okay. It's a maple tree. Yeah. Already down. Yeah. B was already down. Yeah. So, okay. so hold on, because I, I'm seeing... As part of this, they're also proposing replacements. Yeah, and oh. I don't understand that per, per se. I, I think. All right, so we can we can deal with what, let's, let's get a let's go back to and that. Then we'll work on the replacements. Okay. We'll go back to that. Right. Okay, I just want to I just want to highlight. I know this is a detail, but both of these plans, as is, are not true to scale. Well, this one has been scanned up because that's actually not the true size of the stamp. Right, but I'm just saying, neither of these is true to scale. I don't think it's required for an RDA. I'm just point of information. Oh, okay. That's all I want to say. It's not a good, it's not bad, it's oh. just information. Let's just put it this way. I think all of them are within the country. I think that's really true. Okay, so B was down, right? Yes. Dave? And was C was half a trunk still standing. Yes. That's gone. So none of those are count to what the inventory we're talking about right now. We know. That's no. I think a, the point is so a and B I'm making a list of trees that qualify. So yeah. A and B right now qualify because unless you think the tree that was down, which is A, was healthy enough because it because we saw the stump. I don't know if you want to get into that no. forensic stuff, but uh, that, was, that was B. A was long gone. Stump, right? Right. That's stump. what I'm saying. Was the right. stump healthy? Did you think it was just taken down, or do you not want to get into that? I kind of don't want to get no, because no. one okay. of them it looks so like so. Both it A and B cut. right now. They're, they're bringing out someone down. to do a lot more cutting. So right. Uh, if they, if they were going to cut a bunch down, they probably would have done it down. And C is... It's gone. It's gone. Right. So A, B, and C is all down. D? Uh, that was... Uh, 
Uh, it was six inches. It was small. It was, just it was kind small? of small, and it was one that was kind of really all bent up. That was in front of the big um, ash tree that was E. The e is is, re re is remaining. They're not taking that out. So I would say that that D D would be okay to remove. That also was really intertwined with a lot of uh, uh, poison ivy on that stump. So. I guess there's three categories though, right? That there's forget about okay to remove. Would that count towards something that needs replacement? Six inches or less. Does that qualify for a replacement? Yeah. I would say yes. Okay. It's 25 inch. No D. 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 Maple tree. Six inch. Yeah. Okay. So we can we can go back to the ones that are down and take from them. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Right. E, maple tree. That's staying. E staying. E, e is staying. E is staying. Okay. It's F. They want to remove it. Right. Um, I thought it was in good shape. I don't agree with it. G. It's not a maple tree. It's a swamp white oak. Just mm -hmm. for clarification, and it looked. In good yeah, condition. We'll take those down. H, maple tree. Also, it looked like it was in good condition. I. I didn't think H was in good shape. That's one of the ones that I would would say uh, give permission to take out. So I don't agree with that one. Does that make me the tiebreaker? Yeah. Staying. H I is a pine tree. Okay to go. Because I, I What'd you think about the pine tree? Get rid of it. H I, okay. Yeah, I, yeah, everyone agrees on that. I have pine tree. <laughs> J is J That was the canoe tree. Yeah. <laughs> we agreed with that one to get take that one down. Was that already down essentially? No, yeah. it was like a spike. No, that, yeah. <laughs> it was it was it fell down and it was rotted in the center. Like I said, it was hollowed out like a canoe. But so that's not one that necessarily counts. That's a non-replacing tree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um, K says it's a uh, maple, but it's really an oak tree, and it was in good condition. It's so okay. It's K. stay. Same. Yeah. L. Not a maple tree. It's a red oak. It looked like it was in good condition. M was a maple tree. Thought it was in good condition. What did you think, Dave? I thought it was okay. Just trim it up for what's broken. From and the, and the, so the, this, uh, th this is on the other side, right? M is right in the back of the log. Okay, yeah, yes. It, yep. it had a lot of uh, branches that were broken from uh, storm damage, snow damage. And is the one that was the three trunk with yes. the, with the poison ivy that was yep. just oh, I, I, I don't know. Which one was that? Sorry. Oh, we used and, and it's on the left hand side. Right. And that's uh, that's coming down, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, it was a maple tree. I thought it was good in P. I thought it was good too. Another maple tree. Oh, and then there's a this Q right. that's not identified in the write-up. That's a that's a large maple, and I thought that one was good. Where was that at? The Q. It's, that, was, it's, that was the one way back in the corner. It's, it's near. It's right across from M. You can see it on the plan. So Q is going to stay. Yeah. yeah. Well, oh, I think it's good. Okay. So, so did you say you wanted to keep O and P? We can talk about that. Yeah, those, those are two that I, those are ones that they're all on that side there. They're all extensively covered with poison ivy. So our feelings on the right hand side, and they, and they have a nice grassed area right in the middle. 
those trees on the right hand side, even though they, you know, we really think that those are, you know, a nice clump of healthy trees, most of them. Were those bad ones, Chuck? Uh, uh, they're good ones. They're, they're, these are the ones with the blue with the line through it. They have to replace. And I'm just going to circle the ones that people. Well, I thought people agreed that would stay. Um, and they couldn't cut down. <coughs> Without an arborist coming in and saying there's some reason to? No, this is this is an RDA, so yeah. we're, not, we're not allowing those trees down. Five that are coming down that need replacement. Yes. So I need uh, D, I, N, O, and P need to be replaced. This is quite the math problem. Well, Q would, t Q would be two. I, oh yeah, staying is Q, it's and Q. So the, the trees that are staying, I didn't, I thought you didn't want Q to come down. I put it in the staying, it's not getting cut column. So those ones are E, F, G, H, K, L, M, and Q are not being cut. Okay. Right. So you created. That's what I have too. Created a tree row through here. Okay. And then through here. I guess it will wrap into this area. Yeah. I thought you said M, out that else. pine wasn't good. No, M is the one that has, that's the maple that has some branches that are broken. Oh. There is a pine in the center, but. Yeah. It's kind of, it's not okay. really, it's not located correctly here. That's over to the left more on, on this, on this uh, map. That's not really correctly located, but they have it indicated on the, the legend as pine. I, it's the only pine that's in the, in the backyard. Yeah, it's much further over. And that yeah. one should come against the line. That one should come down. Yeah, it's, it's right. pretty far over, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. yeah. As pine trees go, it's not in bad shape. But that's a multi trunk up 20 feet high. Uh, a, B, C, and J. A, B, C, and J are either down or dead, so no replacement. So that's what I got. Okay. So we've got a few on the right hand side that will be staying, a mm -hmm. few in the back, two in the back on the left hand side, and then two on the right hand side that need replacement if we take them down and then three on the other the left hand side that would need replacement right okay is there any understanding about the replacement shrubs what they want to well, do well clethra on the folia is a sweet pepper bush it's a it's a wetland um, species <laughs> there is and the high bush blueberry also too but there's there's something talking about a 
They had uh, they had things they wanted to do. It was a uh, fern, fern bush, fern which bush. I have no idea what that is talking about. Where is the description of those? There isn't one. Okay, because I, I, I am looking what, for. I know what the two of them are, but, but a fern bush, I have, I don't know what they're talking about. So. The plethora, like I don't even see that listed in the RDA. It's sweet pepper bush. It's I don't sweet. see sweet pepper bush in the replacement. It's two oh, okay, okay. Two plethora like, okay, bushes, gotcha. which is Thanks. plethora olifolia, sweet pepper bush. Thanks. So when they say they would like to replace them, do they plan on just putting it right in that spot, or what's the? No, they they were talking about a five foot, um, I think a long the edge of the, the wetland area, if, if I interpret this correctly. But so a lot of those along the wetland area aren't actually coming out, so there may not really be that much. Room there. It's pretty open back there. Mm -hmm. is, oh. is the easement um, oh, lawn? Okay, we've been talking about your project for, oh, I'd say about 15 minutes. Oh, that's ours? Yeah. 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 Thought it was scheduled for you. No, summer 15. Um, is the easement grass? Or is it? No, it, is, well. it is basically right up to the edge of the easement. Okay, it's grass up, up yeah. to the edge of the yeah. easement. Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to understand the limits of it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, well got to like jump, started, jump right yeah, in, yeah. yeah. Questions <laughs> to start off, or since you're already into it, or? So uh, yeah, we went to the site and reviewed the trees, yep. and uh, we looked at each one um, individually. Is it changed from what I have? Uh, there's a couple sketches I drew on this where we talked at the site visit uh, to draw in a natural stone wall, a fence if we were going to put it in, and um, a little bit of grading uh, on topsoil. Off to the um, the side of the house between our yard and the neighbor's yard. So I just added a couple of notes to the fence. So going going through the trees, you created a list of trees to be removed without replacing them. They're either removed or they're so dead that we're not going to ask you to replace them. We have a a list of trees that you can take down but need to be replaced and and trees that we feel like you should not touch okay. and they have to stay. So quite simply it's except for this tree and these two here, this represents the over story of the tree we want to stay and everything else goes. Those two. This is the one that's dead, half broken, mm -hmm. hollow, uh, pine tree, and uh, so that might have been too quick. But we did go through each one of them, and we didn't want you to eliminate all the trees in your yard. And I think we gave you um, the left hand side with drainage ditches, but the right hand side, those trees were so healthy that we didn't have. Uh, any, uh, we didn't have an agreement to take them down. But if you want to talk about those trees, please feel free to. Yeah, so I mean, our, our main concern with it after reviewing, you know, just the condition of how they look is the um, excessive poison ivy growth on all of them. So um, two years ago, we moved into our house. Since then, we've had uh, two little kids, we have twin boys, and we currently have them contained to about a 15 by 15 space in the yard to play in. Um, we would like to give them more space to run around and play, uh, but we also don't want to have to watch them run over to the trees and touch the poison ivy roots, which are uh, clearly pretty bad. Um, so we, we want to just clear up the whole area to the, the back side of the wetlands of the survey area. So it's, it's, you know, the condition of the trees is, I mean, they didn't look too healthy to me. Uh, we had our operators, Paul and Moses from our tree service come out to take a look at it. Uh, we seem to be in agreement with it. Uh, but the, the main concern is the excessive growth of poison ivy and the unhealthy state of the yard. 
Is there a way to treat the poison ivy so and um, I've, I've you know, heard, improve uh, the health of I've the trees? I've heard a couple options so far. One of them is, yeah, I, I mean, maybe you know more about it, but I've, I've heard a couple of things that might take a, a little bit of time, but you know, we don't really, yeah. Hi, how many folks? Bob Moses from Arbor Tree Service. Thanks for uh, letting us speak tonight on behalf of uh, these folks. So I've been out there various times. I actually was out there with uh, Chuck one time, and then I've been out three other times. Um, to answer your question, um, glyphosate is a product that's used that's a very mild part of what's in Roundup that you can buy at Home Depot. Commercially, if they were sprayed, it would do detrimental harm to the root structure of the trees themselves. Um, so with that being said, and some of the vines on these trees, if you folks were out there, some of the vines were four inches. Uh, They're yeah. as bad as Looks like a tree. Okay. Yeah. I have photos like of, of the trees uh, yeah. on the left hand side where uh, exactly yes. Where Chuck said that they were going to allow those sections of trees to come down. There's a, a wide cluster of elm tree that the only part of the tree that you can see any elm leaves on is about the top 15 to 20 percent. The rest of it, it looks like a tree, but it's all poison ivy vines. I mean, in my 41 years, it's one of the worst cases I've seen. So, I mean, if if it were my property, and if I were representing any of you folks, and some of the trees are healthy, some of the trees have girdling roots, which I can show you. Girdling roots suffocate the actual feeding process. Some of the roots are elevated. Um, the pine tree that is at the very back middle is coming out of the ground. It's leaning into the conservation area. I don't know if that's one you're allowing me to take down. The tree yeah, on the is left, which I believe awesome. is a red maple. That is one of the, yeah. Oh, yeah, we're allowing them to take down. You're allowing that. Yes. I believe the tree to the left is a red maple. That one has cord decay at the base. Is that Q? Is that Q? Q is the back left of the property. Was that P? And she wasn't Mark. I believe this would be. I is the pine. Yeah, I is the pine. That's actually. Yeah, that's over oh, to the left. Little. That's a little bit. Okay. Yeah. So, so this, I guess it would be M. That would be the one that has the corticate, so red maple. If you look at the base, I have pictures on it. Um, that one's on the red maple. Yeah. You know, the, the bottom line is. Um, these guys have a couple of young kids, and you know they bought a little piece of heaven in Reading. And granted, they do give it back enough for conservation. But in my opinion, better served for them as a young family growing up to do a majority of the removals and then do a replant. Let them landscape. Let us grind the stumps below grade so the roots are gone. Rather than because if we spray. Whether we do it or he has a company come in that just specializes in mosquito ticks and spraying poison ivy, it's going to leach into the wetlands. I think it's a mistake. And I, and I think it may do more harm than good as opposed to removals. Now, some of the trees have snapped. I think you saw that. Some of them have core decay upper that I can show you. Um, None of them are, like we're not talking sugar maples here, or blue spruce trees, we're not talking about real pristine species, we're talking about somewhat swamp species that have grown. Um, with the exceptions, the nicest tree that would have been is the elm, and that one's infested with the vine. So, Bob, so you're talking about taking them down. After that, what's the, the mechanism to actually treat the poison ivy? We would grind the stumps. We grind them over and we would grind them up. No chemical. Grind the stumps of because the, the poison ivy is <coughs> infested at the base of all the trees. Okay, and so once the trees are removed, flush cut to the ground, we have machinery that will grind the stumps below grade, which will suffocate. All plants need two things: water and light. We're going to eliminate the light to get rid of the vines. Uh, the poison ivy doesn't go beyond that. It's, it's well, it's, it, of course it does. It's, it's in the wetlands. But if if landscape property, once he puts them off, I mean, if you looked at his neighbor's yard beside him, who backs up the wetlands, he's got a manicured lawn, no poison ivy in the lawn here. But now it's, it's, 
maintained behind the wall of his property. So once grass is put in and it's maintained, it's going to eliminate that. And if at that point you, you do get some sprouting vines, you snip it with a pair of walkers. Let me ask the uh, property owner, <clears throat> on the trees to the right, the ones that we think that look healthy, did they have poison ivy on them? Did yes. you rip them out? Did yes. you rip it out? Did I rip the poison ivy out? Yeah. No. I don't want to touch them. Uh, did you see poison ivy over there? It was some of those trees had thin, pencil thick vines on them. Okay. Do you mind if I come up and trace some pictures? Yeah. yeah. Is there I, is there a way we can get it up? I, I did it on my iPad. I don't know. Yeah, this should. Do you have a. Uh... <laughs> Let me see if I can. It's convenient that you're here. Hey, <laughs> fine. I didn't ask. I didn't ask. Hold on a second. No one asked, but everyone looked right at you. <laughs> no. I did not ask. Didn't wear, wear a, a wide, enough of a wide brimmed hat. Stop wearing two hats. Yeah, okay. <laughs> fern bush you guys are talking about? Chuck had mentioned, you know, different things that we could use to replace, and he said one of them were fern bushes. We're happy to replace with anything. something I know of. Um, yeah. Fern bush. Ferns are ferns. We yeah. have bushes. Yeah, so uh, basically, doing, uh, we're happy to do respect. the high blueberries. I guess that's a popular one around here. And then we actually consulted somebody about a good wetland okay. plant that flowers. Um, and it's attractive, and that's what the clothera is. Clothera olifolia. Yep. 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 It's sweet pepper bush is a common name for it. Yeah, so I just consulted somebody and asked, you know, and we're happy to do those two or any combination of, you know, acceptable. Yeah, for every tree that comes down, we're happy to plant whatever we have to plant to substitute it. But I mean, we're just trying to get ourselves to clean the body from our property poison to ivy. poison ivy and wetlands. This is a picture of a one tree that lives. There is a small amount of poison ivy at the base, but you can see the girdling root right here. Girdling roots go horizontal around the cylindrical portion of the trunk. Do you know which tree that is, Bob? That one was an ash tree. That was so so that's that's going to be on the right hand side. That's just the. the yeah. You can see the girdling the root big, right there. That's yeah. too bad. That's a beautiful yeah. looking tree. That's yeah. a girdling root right there. But it does, I mean, you can see this is the smallest amount of poison ivy on any of the trees right here. But this is the one that has the girdle. Okay. So what's the girdling root what, from a different tree or the same tree, and what causes that it, to happen? It, girdling roots start very young at age in a tree. And what they do is they do come subsurface, but they're below grade, and they wrap themselves around the tree, and they basically strangle out the root structure at the base. Um, but but is it currently it's showing wetlands and there's a lot of moisture and water, they, they do better in that condition. That's the root right there. Yeah, going this that's way. the, that actually is the, well, that's the one in the back corner. Right. Near the oh, that's, yeah, that's, that's not the tree we're thinking. That's K. Oh, that would be tree K on our legend, I think. Right here. But, um, now this, so Bob, what one of these trees is a uh, E is a maple. No. No, that's an ash. You're not removing it, but it's identified as a maple. Okay. You're not removing that one. 
No. So he is. That's behind the neighbor's shed. Yeah, he is right behind the neighbor's shed. It's really the only one back That's in the yard. It does have kind of poison ivy. It does have poison ivy. A little bit of the base. Yeah. But it um it has you know nicer foliage at the top, so it's pretty strong. So. I mean, you can see in this picture the, the vines crawling up the tree here. Really is a way okay. that, uh, now, these vines oh, yeah. right near are not as foliated as, as some of the other ones. There's one on the tree trunk over the left. It's that's, just, that's, just that's this big, yeah. all fuzzy. And yeah, yeah. I mean, right. Yeah, so, you know, but. That's a, that's a big vine right there. Uh -huh. I, I guess I would like to try to focus on QM. Go from here. Okay. Q M K H F G E. Did I miss one? E the E K H K S. He is staying. So we don't even need to address that one then. No. F G H K M Q. Right. And F G H K L L M Q. Okay. And L. Those are the ones I think that this commission looked at and said, well, it'd be nice to have those stay. So, Bob, I guess, could you, can you speak to those? And some of the reason why those are staying is because they're, they're all in the same spot and they, they're creating kind of a, uh, I guess, an open area, but a forested area, a little more habitat, and they're all working together. So, um, and as you can see from the plan, at the edge of your property. It's, they're not so tight that your kids can't play in between them. I know you have the poison ivy problem, and I'm not going to say it, but I always think of this Monty Python the skit. And, uh, huh? <laughs> what do you look at? Well, they're <laughs> Wait for it. No, no, I'm not, I'm not going to go into it. But, <laughs> but the fact that you want to remove a tree to get rid of the poison ivy seems like overkill. I mean, they're also holding unattractive. I don't know what happens to the tops of them, but they barely hear any leaves anymore. It's yeah, like I mean, having a giant stick in here. None of them appear to be healthy to us at all. It's going to be tough to get rid of them. I mean, they're just it's all into the trees. Oh, this is before you took out all the, all the topsoil. Every, every one of these trees, you're saying? Yeah, every single one of these I trees? Is, all, they're all dead. I think they're all in terrible they condition. condition. Because that, all that's dead. not yeah. the in agreement with what we it's saw on site visits. It's just, okay. it's just bad as I've seen. So, you know, based on site visits, sure we agreed that O, N, P, I, J, C, D, B, and A were fine yeah. to go. We could agree on those. It's the remainder that we'd like to see stay. See, and, and if you need to work with a certified, you don't have an issue with, you know, poison me. ivy guy to get to deal so with the one. poison ivy poison prevalence ivy. in the remaining or whatever. Well, then that's yeah, so something you can do. I wanted to I wanted to ask a question. A tree. Sorry to Sorry. talk and twice jobs. here. If I can just, so this plan has smooth transition with topsoil, but I don't see a plan in here about anything in here about bringing in more earth work. So what are you talking about bringing in more topsoil? Um, I mean, I just want to level out the transition from yard to yard. Okay. So, I don't know, maybe the so, soil. Well, that's so based on the site that was visit. That soil, right? So yeah, that's the soil. That's the swale. The swale, the, swale. the swale on the left hand side had some, a few skunk cabbages in it. So there must have been a little bit of. So I don't know if you're trying to fill that up or whatever. So uh, I mean, I, not necessarily. It's just it's something we discussed when we were all out there okay. together. And Did you get a chance to talk to the engineering department? No, no. But I mean, it I, mean was, I think it's, that's important. Yeah, it's just the fact that you said if you're, if you're trying to do something. Yeah even if it's in the future, to identify it on the plan and bring it in, so. Do you have some understanding of um, the, where the wetland line, do you have an understanding of where the wetland line is on your property? Because we have some observational ballpark understanding, and a lot of what we're talking about kind of, you know, pertains to that, because there are setbacks from the wetland line that we'd like to see as mm -hmm. a vegetated buffer. Yes, not so not, are, not based, turned based to lawn, but kept as a vegetated buffer. That kind of lay out the wetlands areas. It's right where that drainage easement is. 
Okay. For that dotted line is, that's, okay. that's kind of where And that's the where the, the grass actually ends. Mm -hmm. I, I right. talked to add that line. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. Usually what we like to see is a vegetated buffer between that wetland line, some sort of vegetated transition zone between the wetland and, and the lawn. I you think know. you guys were talking about that. You know. Yeah, you were like five feet. Yeah. Is that, is that that's where they were talking about. Yeah, the initial idea was to yeah. put the buffer zone of bushes, the replacement bushes back there. Yeah, and we don't allow filling of wetlands either. So the place where you want to put soil and where no, you want to put fill is going to have to be really clearly shown on this plan. No, I, I don't plan on doing any of that. Okay, okay but this says smooth transition with topsoil. That's so the left side. Yeah. The left side. Yeah, okay. Between our two properties, not in the wetland. When we were up there, that swale and the difference in elevation between the two properties was pointed out. And I thought you clearly had said that you were just going to put the when you took out the trees and that since the bushes were already gone, you were just going to level that up on your property. It, it, and, and I'm fine with doing that. It's just something we talked about and thought I'd identify it. Well, can, can, I, can I just say in my experience here on commission, I get nervous with language like level out just vaguely thrown around. I want to see something exactly written down of how many inches of soil you're proposing to put where. Okay. Because sometimes you know, some people here might say, okay, it's okay to level this out, and there's some perceived understanding on this side, mm -hmm. and then what you go home and do is something different from what we understand, and it ends up being a contentious issue. Okay. So I, yeah. so we need to kind of really narrow down the I'm specifics of that. I'm not sure it even is a matter of inches, because it's really I didn't even think there was yeah. any sort of great so, difference between us and the neighbors. So it might just be raking. It is, literally. So yeah. no fill added. Just raking. No, I think okay. I think you're just saying add something because maybe the soil is so bad over there. I mean, we wouldn't be able to plant grass without putting some sort of live soil there. It's just kind of what kind of what's what's the soil like over there? Pretty bony. Roots. Yeah, it's bony. 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 bony clay. I mean, yeah. we, have, we don't even have like a lawn. We have like moss. That like it's like awful. I don't even know what it is. I should show you some of the prize areas of my yard. <laughs> Yeah. Right, but you're going to get that near a wetland. Okay, oh, so you're going to, I mean, you know, that's how trees behave near a wetland. So right. I'm not too surprised that you'll have elevated roots. Right. So, and neither am I, but right. you were asking what it looks like, so I want to show you. Yeah. Um, so all along the east side of the property line from Glenmore, east, southeast, is a swale. And there's there's skunk cabbage in that in that low area. This, there is kind of a depression in there. It is filled up with lawnmowers and snowblowers and and, next, and some other trees and things. You know, the, yeah. the, the exotic trees. You know, the yeah. the errands and the uh, turro. <laughs> but um, it, it it it's something to be you know to understand that there, there's there's some wetland action going on there. That's that's low enough to be into the groundwater that um, uh, you know you're getting vegetation that needs to be wet more than 50 percent of the year to to sustain itself. So you're really close, and this plan makes it clear that where the stone wall is, where the filling is, um, are, are pretty close to the wetland. Right. And I see that you put in a, a fence as well. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I think I think the f the I mean I like I mean you can still put the fence around. The trees aren't so tight that we want to save. I mean maybe it would take another site visit to go out there and give it a, a you know another look. I I know I looked clearly, but the whole commission wasn't out there. But. That fence in that yard with that spacing in between the trees only leaves one problem. How to get rid of the, the uh, poison ivy without uh, affecting anything that's going to be in the wetland and have a, you know, kind of a different effect than you're trying to achieve by removing the poison ivy. And I think that you've gone in there already and you've graded out that topsoil. And that may have helped a lot in cutting down a bunch of these trees, and you're left with just several trees, eight trees. 
out of 26. I've got seven. One, two, three, four, five. This, so the 16 items in question. Oh, yeah. Two of them are stumps and two others are just half trees that yeah. got blown down during storms. So it's really a total of 12 that are in question. Yeah, we, we I just counted again. I got 17, so I don't have 26. But I, I don't know. That's the problem with some of these tree plants. Sometimes when we count them over and over, we have to we come up with a different number. So we have to. It's know, on the plant the too. Trees, you also 17, have to come back and count 17 extra. trees. But there, it also counts the trees that are already cut, that just right. the stumps are there. So yeah, the 17. Right, and then the school was there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, down. so you can I don't see the things on the color. The, the, those are down. These four red ones here, in, in our mind. The, the, they're gone, they don't yeah. exist. Yeah. They're, stumps they're, they're not even that worth thing discussing. Sticks up. Yeah. I do want to I do want to clarify that the plan you gave us tonight includes uh, fencing and uh, mm -hmm. a stone wall that I assume is proposed. Yes. Yeah. Um, so um, I don't have a problem with the fencing on the east and west side, the right and left side of the lot. Um, I do have a problem with the stone wall being on the wetland line in the back. I'd love I'd love to see that moved up so that there is some buffer. Um, okay. And and I don't know. Um, you know, I don't, uh, you, you can put whatever, you know, <laughs> I could see, I could see something coming out, you know, to one of the vegetated setback lines, like the 25 foot ZNV or the 35 foot ZNV. So let me explain that this site was historically grass. And okay. when they did their clearing, and I was trying to explain this this afternoon, when they did their clearing, so if, if you can assume the edge of the stone wall is the is limit the, of lawn. Yeah, it's yes. it's the wetland line. Right. And then ten feet in front of it was cleared. That was new. So that was their effort to get rid of the poison ivy. So the twenty five foot line that you're talking about is fifteen feet in into historic or yeah, grass. historic grass. Where grass already grass was, was okay. and all where we existed. So I think what we're what we're getting down to, if you want to do a vegetated buffer, is in that in that somewhere, ten foot somewhere area. In, somewhere so, in there, not on the wetland line. So what about ten feet? We're talking maybe ten feet back with stone wall, and then between the wetland and the stone wall, you'd put your vegetation. There's you know, your. We, do we I, like, and you're I like, using natural. I like the stone wall where it is on the plant. There already is a stone I don't think wall there's going to be a big deal with several rocks. What's, what's your reason for liking it where it is? I, I think towards the house path because than the stone wall is, is nothing there anyways. It's all so if he, so if, he, if he moves it a foot forward or or whatever, if, it, if it's a staff, if the stone wall is not established, it's from rocks that exist on the property elsewhere. So he's gonna he's gonna build that. And if you so what if he built it at the edge of the disturbed area? So it's on the disturbed area. It's not in where there's like natural vegetation still growing. Do you know what I'm talking about? No, I'm, I'm, I'm getting confused. You, <clears throat> so you went to the edge of the grassed area and then from 10 feet towards the wetland you cleared out? Is that my understanding or not? They cleared an additional 10 feet beyond the edge of the grass. It, but I'm not sure there was actual, yeah, it sounds like it's not, because there's still grass there now. This grass there, but it goes right into <coughs> the wetland. Yeah. So, so that sounds like so it looks like in back of M and K, like that. If that stone wall was just flipped, you know, to be beside M and near K, then it would be out of the wetland. Can I just clarify from a, a yeah? Maybe we're not. We're saying the same thing. I think we are. I just, I just want to clarify too. I didn't. I didn't clear out wetland. It was from M forward ten feet. It was from the previous homeowner. It was dumped grass clippings, dumped foliage, a yep. dog cage, trash. I mean, I think if anything, we kind no, it wasn't kind wetland. Of service to it. It so. was in. It was in front of it. The, yes. the line yes. of the wetland is in back of where you 
You didn't. Yes. You didn't go she into that area. Yes. So okay. I hope that's clear. You didn't go into that. Well, area. see, that's so. I'm sorry. It was all buffer that he worked in. Because I'm hearing point one is that grass is up to the wetland line, and now you're saying no, 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 no. it was past the grass no. point that was clearing. So that's why. But if you, yeah. that's not what you're saying. Can I also understand just quickly when we're talking about a, a stone wall, what exactly we're talking about? We're you. Because I hear, I'm fine with what you're talking about, which is finding natural rocks around the yard and stacking them away. That's me. Okay. Yep. Not a landscaper so coming in and building a wall. Okay. Just naturally there's, there's but there already is a, a line of stone. It's pretty big, and those stones. It's basically, like there's a they're historical they're stone right. sort of stone wall. Behind him, there's already, is already a line yeah. of stones yeah. there. Yeah. Well, the fire. Then he's got a fire all pit. The way, yeah. All the way across? Yes. But they, it's not it's not contiguous. It's just yeah. a bunch of big well, rocks along M. Dead, dead and he has so. a fire pit in the back. <laughs> and he's just going to take all those rocks and, and then just add them. That's fine. I just yeah. wanted to make no. sure it's not. we're not talking about a landscape. No. Thank you. <laughs> Again, we just want to make sure we're all on un an understanding. It's like it's a natural and attractive and yeah. safe. We don't want the kids running into the stream back there. We don't want kids, you know, so this will slow them down at least a little bit. And there's poison ivy back there. Yeah. Hopefully it'll be done. Hopefully it'll be done. You did, done. You did say you have twin boys? Yes. yes. You have a, a, a stream in your backyard? Yeah. That ain't happening. <laughs> They'll be in there every every chance they get. Frogs, maybe they'll go back to the Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, that's good. As long as they're healthy. So. Okay. All right, so we have, we're all set on the stone wall. So. The fence, we've historically let fences be uh -huh. right up to the edge of the wetland, so uh -huh. unless they're... With some clearance, with some caveats that... Well... We yeah. have. When there was... Yeah, and, but there's also been, for example, um, Randall Road is going right up to the 25-foot line. So we allowed that. We allowed um, the daycare to, to do a gravel driveway right up to the edge of the well right uh, so right. there's been situations and I, I think we just changed our minor project permits to say that if you're right up as long as it's in any buffer you can't do it in the wetland I can approve I can approve a fence right up to the edge of the wetland but it is situational based on the existing use of the property and what's yeah. grandfathered and what's not and that that is a consideration you be okay amending on the on the uh, west side of your, your property just cutting that smoothing to topsoil just at your property line not continuing it sure sure that's fine i i mean if if i were to do that i might as well just keep the next rod in there and still made the topsoil in here it's really just a transition you can just say rake really or something yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah that's fine it won't be trucking in of any sort of um, so I guess uh, th those are the other items. I guess we're still a little bit stuck though on eight trees, um, and I haven't heard any resolution to that. Well, they want to keep E. That's the only one they want to keep. F G. Sorry, let me go through the list. F G H L K M Q. And and Bob, again, if you've got more details on any of those that that you could provide with with pictures, it'd be great to hear. Well, there's, there's certainly some core decay. Um, this was on the outside of one of the trees. I'm I'm not sure now where. I think this is a canoe. canoe. I think yeah. that's Jay, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, going. Jay is the canoe. Okay. Canoe. That's, that's going. Jay. Um, and then, <laughs> oh no! Save that. That will get down in the last. That's one. that's the one shock that you guys want to do. Yeah, we should never have to. I know. Here and, and again, I, I probably should have been more specific no. about no. where they no. are in the map. Yeah. But you can see the box slowing off on this side. This is a maple tree, and this side looks like a sheer crack with the box slowing off. Yeah, that, I think that with that big um, poison ivy vine, yeah, I saw that such any? a substantial one. It was either N, P, mm. or O, O, N, P. And was the poison ivy one? This one here is at the back left corner of the house, uh, back left lot, and there's a lot of crown dye back in there. You can see it. Mm -hmm. 
this is the one that Dave, I think you were talking about, had some branches maybe that were in yeah, back left corner. Back left corner. That's that I think that was M. M. Oh. Yeah, that's the one that had the branches that were. Oh, oh those from the, maker? Yeah, from the uh, from the snow load. That's that's that tree M. Windstorm, really? Yeah. 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 It's yeah. incredible. It snapped yeah. off most of the time. It's like the piece of the rock. Every, every, every time there's heavy winds coming through the yard, something. But blows that off. one that you just showed us would that be salvageable with just a trim job to that? Is there any any other things it's, that are wrong with that tree? Um, what what letter did you say? M. 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 It's a maple. It's a maple that's it's mm. kind of standing almost alone, uh, right in the back. So is it right beside right the end? No. Uh, no, it's, it's way in the back. Is it right. slated to be removed? Yes. yes. P, N, and O are all uh, well, all trees that we N said. O, we, N, P. Commission has those, are, those, are, those are ones that we said we'd allow to take down. Okay. I have a, quite a nice picture of... D, G, and F, if anyone wants to see what they look like. D, G, and F? I, I think I yeah. saw one on Bob. Yeah, there's another picture we'll have, too. Right. The more you... This nice one is E. Yeah, that's the, the one that's... Yeah. All the hideous yeah. fine ones right around it. Yeah, and so F... F was one that I said. Yeah, D, F, G. Yeah, so this little nothing is C. E... E was the ash. Yeah, so what, what are we talking about with F here? So I'm going to modify, pass it around. F seems F like is a, a maple tree. Yeah, but it seems like nothing. Well, it's awful. F yeah, is the one, F is the well, one that I said I'd take down. Okay. <laughs> I said I would take it down, but Becky said no. Can I ask a question so I understand how yep. this works? Let's just say you folks said, okay, there's a lot of poison ivy and basic vines that are going to, you know, cause some problems for the kids. If these trees were removed and they agreed to do planting of ornamental species, why wouldn't you accept that? And Less allow, habitat. Huh? Less habitat. And a, Less shading. A different, different habitat. Different habitat, yeah. Less shading. It's not one for one replacement. Oh, trees and bushes are, I mean, we, we try to have a... a policy for a, a tree removal, you know, or, or two tree removal. But when you're talking that, about a is, large removal of a lot of trees, you're changing This one D we didn't count. There. This is one that we were allowed to be taken out. This is one we're allowed to be funny. taken out. This is one that we... Quite a few really there is nice poison ivy, down. but that's so, one of the ones. So this one, this this is the one you're keeping. But these trees yep, are nowhere. And this one and this one are right, ones so really that we be said right after said that, that you could take take you could redefined get rid of. our policy. Okay. That was um, <laughs> that was that's exactly <laughs> what changed our mind. We're replacing these mature so trees. Is, yeah. It's not with a mature yeah. tree. That wouldn't have happened. It's going to take some time. Say. To not, get that habitat, I, I think I know exactly the one that right. yeah, we're talking about yeah. as well. Yeah. Everybody, yeah, even I think this one that you see over uh, here is probably G. <laughs> so right. I think whatever you guys allow these folks to take down and what's going to stay. So these, these are the three here. Absolutely. Those are the ones that we said yes to go. Trying to remediate it by not this guy, though. I think so. I thought they said that was the one that they wanted to save. That and G. Out so we thought we were looking at the left hand side with that particular three trunked tree that has a huge huge poison ivy and I agree that you know take that and I'm thinking that cluster I forget it's the three, yeah the three on the left you could really get in there and get you know, hopefully a, a lot of the underground roots for the, right. the poison so ivy. Round out. Right. So how far over, just as far as, how far over, these are not allowed to go except for the red ones? These the are red ones so, are kind of the, down. So I would agree with Dave that F, is, that right? F is, is nothing, and, and to be honest, G doesn't look that great either. So, and, and that's right by the shed. You know, I'll, I'll, I mean, 
I like the idea of everything H and that is, with the exception of J and I. The ones by the shed are pretty brutal, except for E. So e yeah, except for E. Yeah. yeah, except for E. And that, that's the one. So F and G are the two that we've kind of said right now is. Right. Like thin and shiny. Yeah, I think, you know, there's also poison ivy removal experts. I mean, I know, I don't. All right, so so let's move you know, that. so so if you removed F and G, I mean you're still looking at some replacement. Yeah. Um, and keeping L K I H was it I? No, H L K M Q. H L and E. Yeah, E. E's e, off the table. E. We don't have to talk about what's, E anymore. What's, Everybody what's with L and K? Those are staying. Yeah, why not have L and K stay? That's what I'm saying. The ones that stay right now that that, that I'm of the opinion of would be H, L, K, M, Q. What if what if we left so A, you, L, you and get E? You want to get rid of F, G, and E? No. E's, e is, is not staying. on the He's table. It's not okay. staying. What's well, the circle? We'll just say, on say it every time, anyways. E. Okay. E H L K M Q. So F and G have just been removed. <laughs> yes. Uh, I've, yeah. Based on my, what I saw of those, I mean, those do not look very good. Predict F most definitely. If you folks will allow him to take these right here. This, this cluster right here, and leave these. At least we could clear the poison ivy out of this area because these three are already coming down. Your line going back, well, this one's going to go and that one's going to go. We we'll leave L K H. At least this part we could remediate the poison ivy. This is right back against the wetlands over here. These two are staying, and then these are far enough away from Q that once these are gone, we could really grind and try to alleviate the underground and the vines. So you're only leaving four in the back on the right-hand side because one is a spear. Yeah. And, and then, and because remember, if I'm going to grind, I have to be careful not to damage the roots of these trees that are staying. So that gives me enough room. So to you're going to take your e, e down. Fine. I guess it's fine. No, he's, he's, no, no, he's, he's good. never. No, yeah, he's no. talking about taking. So, the reason I think he was just talking about those skinny. Well, it, it's a good question though, uh, from Becky. So, are you going to be able to keep E alive if you're grinding out all all the ones around it? Keep the one alive. The, e, the, the ash. The, one behind the, the big, shed. the one that we keep on saying. Oh, is that is E behind the shed? Yep. yep. I forget about that. I'm sorry. If the shed's not. It should not show. But we knew that one was going to stay. But we wouldn't be grinding it. But Bob, are you going to be able to actually keep it and keep it healthy when you're grinding and taking roots out and clearing that the poison ivy roots and everything that's in that area around F, G, D, and C? I will have to say that's the only tree I didn't walk in the back of the shed and look at because they said it wasn't theirs. Mm -hmm. So I didn't even consider that. I don't know how infested that is with vine. Did you guys look at it? I don't know that it's infested. I, the I the trunk looked pretty clear at the bottom, so it would be in the ground. So, 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 yeah, then I'm not going to get into the vines there because it's not over there, and I won't get into the roots because that's on the other side of the shed. So, yeah, we wouldn't do any damage on it. And remember, we're not grinding down 12 or 14 inches. You know, we're going to go down surface grinding six inches maximum to, to alleviate the vines. We can't talk about this all night, guys. We either need a site visit or Mike's going to go by the pictures. What's 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 going to happen? Visit. Another I, site visit. Let's have another site visit to want, look at E, F, G, H, K, L, and M. Those are the only ones on the tape. Yep. Site visits are Monday, at nine to eleven. The next one is the twenty third, nine nine thirty to eleven thirty. Someone be there. I'd like to be there just so okay. I can. I, I think yeah, that'd be good. Bob. That'd be good. I, I think you know, for you to sit, particularly at, at the ones that are in question, and, and point out, here's the concerns yeah. of why the poison ivy in particular would be a concern at each one of those groups where if we think it's necessary to stay, I think it would help. Right, and then I, obviously for their sake as well, it should be clear on if they are going to be treated after with a chemical, because we don't want to have them have any uh, repercussions if there is dye there because of treatment. 
Yeah. I wouldn't be the guy doing the treatment. I would have to hire somebody to bring the treatment to get professionally, you know, right. does the chemical application. But we would that, require that. What's that? A license application would have Absolutely. to. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and that's somebody that you would have to write up a, you know, a proposal to submit to you guys. Because there's a lot of organic stuff that's being sprayed today, too. But we don't. Well, and, and, and I guess that's just in addition to everything we've got here. Part of my concern is you know, we, we want to see it gone. We want to see the, the poison ivy treated. But just taking out the trees may not be the solution. It's part of it. The vines are so big. What? Some, some of the vines are three, four. Okay. Anyway. We have to move on. That's fine. So we're going to continue. I make a motion to continue uh, 30 Glenmore Circle. Second. All those in favor? So thank you very much. Thank we'll, thank you. Before he goes, should we say the date? Uh, well, yes. it's the 23rd of Monday, the 23rd, and I'll call you the, win the Thursday before or email you. If somehow you'll you'll have notice. Okay. All right. We're not so I, and I, I have Bob's contact information too, so that won't be a problem. Be okay. Make sure Bob. Okay. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We have a, at 725 a notice of intent, 285 yeah. Main Street, Map 12, Lot 43, uh, Baja, Taj Engineering, LLC. Um, so, this is a continuation. Do we have a representative? Yeah. Just tell me if this works um, for you. Yeah. Like, why is did, did we have different times on our... Uh, no. Okay. I mean, this doesn't say that, but... Oh, so we had a, another one issued a while ago. Oh. Yes. Could we talk about that just the right amount of time? Uh, night before last night, we did get our uh, 
approval from uh, planning board, CDPC, and tonight we are here to request your order of conditions for installing these three <coughs> additional parking spaces, uh, which is going to be for employees only. As you can see, it's in tandem. So it will be managed by the store management and the employees themselves. It's three uh, standard spaces. It's uh, previous material. Uh, the grading will not be changed, modified at all. Um, as a result, the drainage pattern as it exists right now <coughs> will not change. Um, the concern, one of the concerns that came up was that um, there, should, there should be assurance that no parking will be made on the left side of the existing dumpster area. We propose a no parking sign. We could not propose a guardrail guard because <coughs> this edge of pavement is open to plow for a snow plow plowing to push the snow in this snow storage area. And uh, the other night, planning board did not like the idea of a sign, since there are so many signs, it seems, on this side already. So we came up with the idea to put a wheel stop there uh, to make sure no vehicle can cross over the edge of the pavement. And the height of a wheel stop is adequate for a plow to lift and push over. Can you explain what that is? I'm sorry, I'm not understanding. What is that stop? Wheel stop? Yeah. It's a piece of precast concrete that you have seen on the, they put in front of parking is uh, mm -hmm. so that your wheel will hit it and in order to. A concrete section curve. Exactly. It's parking, like a parking a, bumper. A parking. Bumper. Yeah. Bumper. Bumper. Right. Yeah. What did you call it? A bumper. parking bumper. Parking bumper. bumper. Right, right, right. So it's, it's placed in such a manner that uh, it will stop your wheel that the front of the car will not reach the curb or the area, the boundary that you don't want to walk. Is, how, how do you put that down? Is, is the guy that's plowing going to know that's there? And Exactly. Yeah, I mean, wow. it's there <coughs> it's there throughout the year. And the plow, it's called him plow man, <laughs> or plow person, um, is familiar with the site. We can put a couple of stakes or any kind of marking uh, indicating that this is the line. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if it gets pushed over, it has to be put back, obviously. Yeah, but in the pile here, nobody can park there uh, uh, you know, when there's a pile of snow there. Do you happen to know if there's any ways to kind of um, reinforce um, the stability of those types of bumpers with some sort of... Yeah, they have holes in them. In general terms, you drive reinforcing rod down through the holes and, okay. and that, that affixes them to the ground. Yeah. Through the frost line and yes. all that, yeah. and it's effective. Like it's DOT yeah. certified. Well, and no. Trust me, if you hit it with This is a very cheap yeah. situation. It's a piece of rebar, and yeah. the well, plow is going to manhandle it. The plow still yeah. takes it over. Yeah. The plow but can plow still take that and send it. I, I don't want to go down this, this wheel stop road too far. We're, I'm not agreeing to anything but a guardrail because. I've had too many conversations with the owner and telling him not to park there where they continue to do it. So <laughs> I'm not going back yeah. there to tell them to stop. So it's a guardrail. Yeah. And, and, and that's all there is. Well, As a matter of fact, I added this to the presentation so everyone can understand what we're talking about. Chuck, where, do they, where that, are they putting the snow? What, that's what we need. Something substantial that 
that the employees understand what's going on. I don't, I don't find that uh, something that I need to compromise on, although I'm just me. But I would like you to hear what I'm saying. It, I can't go down there every single day and tell these guys, because you can remove that and you can right. put a four by four up against it and you can put a two by four up against it and you can just go right up over the curb there's one of these guys has an suv the other guy probably has an suv you know no, so I've seen the Mercedes. it's it, it <laughs> i mean certain things have to we need certain things to make sure that we can protect that area so, so that's that's just one of them okay, that has to happen. but the question i have a question so when they snow plow, would they be snow plowing into those three new spaces and, and pushing it over to the so side? So it's not my concern about where they snow plow because they want to change their plan by adding three parking spots. If they present a new snow plowing area because they're adding three parking spots that's in our no-go no zone, I'll entertain it. But right now, they can go in there with a bobcat and lift it up, up and over. And as a matter of fact, that might be a bobcat lot, lot anyways. So I've never seen who's plowing it, but most most commercial people have a bobcat to do these, uh, these lots. Just in line with that same hmm. parking concept, Chuck, um, you know, we've got a fence for the curve shown shown right now yeah, I and, and my thought is I mean all I see is a compact car spot <laughs> mm. there uh, I, I would love to see the fence make a, a right hand turn oh, and, yeah. and follow the shape of the parking there was a would too. there's a memo from um, engineering and they're talking about a curb or a guardrail to prevent additional parking from occurring in the 35 foot zone of natural vegetation. I, I might add, just to say, piggyback what you're saying, I've gone by there uh, several times and, and there's been four vehicles parked in that area. Hmm. And the, the fourth vehicle is definitely in the 35 foot zone. So they're already parking four vehicles there. Yeah, it's it's we, we need to so agree to if that parking isn't defined, then right. we're gonna end yeah. up yeah. with another car. Yeah. Right. Exactly. It's okay. it's Say okay, but manage the rest of the site so it's, mm -hmm. it can't be encroached upon. So the other thing that's happening is um, the, I don't know if those are abrovites, but whatever those, the vegetation is next to the park, they've asked, CPDC has asked that that does not get planted there and a more hardy plant is planted somewhere else that can be maintained. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had talked about that. that. Yeah, it didn't, would, it didn't make would, any sense. It doesn't make any sense to put those arborvitaes there. Those are mm -hmm. they're going to get destroyed. They're just going to get destroyed. Yeah, yeah. we're not going to have room. Mm -hmm. There's a fence there right now, right? No. Does the fence go all the yes. way back? The fence is there. The vinyl fence, the six-foot vinyl fence, so is there. So I don't think Why you not? really need any additional vegetation along the six-foot vinyl fence. I'm, I'm yeah, it's that. I mean, I think it's a great idea that we're adding parking where we can, based on what we've allowed up to the 35 foot line around the rest of the town. I think that's a great idea, but everywhere else, you know, unless we're talking about a motorcycle spot, is there is 35 foot or closer, you can't, and you can't park there. Um, it's a, it is a pretty tight site. So. The, the, uh, once these three spaces are defined, uh, well, obviously, could be in, in, in your order of conditions. Right now, like you said, unfortunately it's being used, as I understand, but now it is official and <clears throat> quote unquote legalized and marked and demarcated on the ground by means of these three spaces. And of course, any, 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 viola any violation then becomes very obvious. In terms of these bushes, we agreed the other night with the, uh, planning board that, yes, it's not necessary, we won't do it. In terms of <clears throat> putting a granite curbing around here, I think we think it is causing more disturbance. You're disturbing the grades now. Now you're causing six inch reveal by putting curbing. So you're just creating more unnecessary activities. Now you have to uh, touch the grade and, and, and regrade and modify, uh, whereas... You 
you're touching the grade with the with the pavers anyway. No, we are not. We are not. We are not. We are you're not. installing those pavers with a sub base, right? Yeah. Right, so you're you're excavating, you're no, touching you're the grades matching, to do that anyway. But you're matching existing grades. If I put curb here, I have to match this grade. Now I go up six inches. Now I have to raise in the back six inches and then go back and match existing existing grade. So who wants the curving? We don't we don't want the curving. I just did that whole talk about putting in a guardrail. The, uh, I think the town engineer has... Town engineer. Chuck, on this memo? Where did you want the curving, though? Yeah. <coughs> no, 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 God, I think actually it's, 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 it's kind of... Boring, the rest right? of the lot is not curved, and this is it's like three sections of curving. It doesn't... I mean, I can talk to Ryan and tell him... I think the yeah, curbing was because or, they didn't want or the guard. a gap guardrail, he yeah. says. Yeah. So I think he's talking about the same material. Yeah. 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 Uh, I guess, so how about the fence there? You've got it as a, a radius curve. right now. Right. So, is, is this not supposed to be a fence? No, no this is a silt fence. During, okay. the, during this activity here, we put seal fence to protect the resource area. Yeah, okay. Uh, I so there's, there's nothing to demarcate this area. Here right we, can, we can do wood edging, which is which is flush with the ground, and it's, it defines the the difference between two different materials. So what we're going to propose for that area is more guardrail. I'm actually in agreement with Chuck. I'd like to see guardrail to the left of the dumpster pad so this, and yeah, guardrail D lock demarcation. Yeah, guardrail around there, yes. I think we had talked about this yeah. previously. Yeah. yeah, when we did the yeah. Yeah. visit. I don't even know if you have to go. Do you need to go back? I, I think just yeah, straight across. back. You don't have to go across because there's fencing <laughs> on the. Do you, yeah, okay, I don't even know if you can go like this one here, right? Well, hold on a second. You can tell me if you can find I have four children, and two of them have recently learned how to drive. <laughs> so, <laughs> very similar to new employees, and this is employee parking. You, you need to define the parking area. Anywhere where we don't have guardrail is going to become parking. Okay. Yes. So. But then how will you solve the issue of the snow storage and the snow removal and the snow plow? Uh, it's not my issue. If you want the parking, you're going to, I would suggest you hire a guy with a bobcat. Uh, yeah, I think they lift it and dump it over the side. And, and Chuck, I think in general we're right. I mean, this, I don't know for sure, for sure but this, is a, this seems like just with the shape and location, this is a bob. Bobcat lot already. I mean, that's right. So what, what? I'm sorry, I don't understand the idea of bobcat. And by the way, any conservation commission I have been, I have been representing um, the African I mean, not representing the conservation. The snow storage has been one of the main issues. Mm -hmm. I mean, you say it's not your responsibility to your issue. Right. So we we and review. What we review. You need, so we're telling you that we would, we're, one of the one things we're not going to move away from is that guardrail. So now that's presented a, a different situation which you need to solve, which is to present something which is um, to handle the snow. And then we'll review that. And I don't think those snow storage areas, I don't think those snow storage areas are out of the question. No, I think I think the bobcat, it, so do you understand the bobcat? The bobcat can shovel and lift and dump, and a plow can't do any of that. So, and I've seen many a parking lot handled with both plows and bobcats. So I don't know who does his bob. I mean, we don't. We haven't even asked Max who's doing this and what their capacity is. So it might be a new point. So. Well, I mean, okay, that's fine. The bobcat can come and lift, and you would have a pile right behind the garden. And before you knew it, after the first winter, the the, the garden is being well, damaged, can, broken anyway. He so. can do it there, and yeah. What's what's asked to happen? So you're you're not really using this area, which is good for the for the resource area. You know, having a snow storage here. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not really recharging the resource area, and also you're just having a big pile of snow just behind the guard lane, equal to the to the width of the bucket of the 
Bobcat, period. Rest of it, it's get the six inch or 10 inch or 12 inch of the natural snowfall. <coughs> Yeah, so like I said, I started out by saying you want three parking spots and we're going to not compromise on a few things. So if it ends up that for those three spots that you know you have to come up with a new area to dump the snow or a new uh, operator to use different equipment, that's a trade-off. Or there's one of those spots that just gets lost during the winter. Yeah, maybe, so maybe something like that. Mm -hmm. I, I think they could dump it over. We've had some situations where guys with bobcats are pretty creative. You know, I mean, by all means, don't do wood. Do do uh, do a highway guardrail. That'll last a little bit longer. So. Beautification of the resource area. Yeah. Well, I'm protecting it's it. Yeah. I'm yeah. protecting yeah. it. I mean, we're we know protection. what your client has been doing to this area. That is needed. So I'm not getting off of that. So this, you know, if we're going to mess up two feet of it, a two foot width around that whole parking area, then it's protecting the rest. And if and if I had seen something else over the course of you know the last eight months, maybe I would have a different opinion. But I don't. Okay. Anything else? Any other questions for the commission members? Well, there's another thing we have to talk about, the planting. So okay. We need to... Um, there were there was a line on the edge, and there were some dead... Yeah. I think they're white pines. Some of the planting from the original order of condition had died off. Um, it looked like it was because uh, the roots were buried and the trunks were buried, so it killed all the white pines. So also as part of that, and I think you have a certain amount of plants, we're, we're going to need to see more planting in that area, a more hardy um, bush or something that, and we're also we're thinking that on the other side of the site, and I don't know what the difference is, but over here, the, it's, it's, it's really a great, it came out really nice, and it's established itself, and it's doing well. And I don't know if you have sprinklers there, and you don't have them over the other side, but if, if something like that could happen, because I, I think that these guys are paying attention to the business and not so much on the landscaping, but this is done great on its own. So I know it can happen here. So to, to do uh, hardy landscaping and maybe add some uh, sprinkler system to help that out, would be great. Um, Chuck, can you can you be specific of where you're talking about the additional plantings? It's almost that whole front side of this. Well, no, back see this here? Oh, oh, additional right there, plantings. Yes. It's in the, yeah, it's in the shaded area. <coughs> additional planting, you mean beyond what the... I mean, I personally don't see any problem with uh, replicating or fulfilling anything dead or yeah. missing from the original order of condition. All right, so it's those. And it's all those abravitae, so that amount of abravitae plus the, the whatever's dead out there, which is probably those eight um, white, white pines. Okay, no, yeah. And it doesn't have to be eight white pines. You can come up with whatever else you want, but those are going to die. Um, and it, it might be something. It might be something that, to, to look at because you're right. You're going to need a certain amount of area that you want to dump snow in. So we want to cover the place up with with you know shrubs. You want to keep it next to the edge, maybe build it out, and it's going to get a little bit of shading. So there's a lot to think about, but um, you know, if there's enough room for that many aphrodite or some other some other material that grows in better, then, then that's what we'd like to have also incorporated into this. Yeah, but like I said anything which has been uh, missing or uh, dead from the original uh, order of conditions, yeah, definitely it makes perfect yeah. sense to, to replace and uh, replicate. Yeah, you can uh, find you can't, you can't <coughs> plant that many plants anyways. Okay. Yeah, no, we can. This was not actually intended. We just wanted to give it some, some shape, some green greens, make it really look like 
me and uh, a pro research video. But and any other place that feels kind of naked, you know, we can. That's fine. We can plan. Chuck, it's only can we, down one area. Yeah, could we talk about those other areas right uh, along the stream in the middle? If you could just that you we didn't want planted, correct? Well, we made a trade off on the original okay. order of conditions, and for this this spot here, which was a very steep bank, mm -hmm. and this area here, we asked to have. Uh, core log put along the bank of the stream to protect the undermining and the, the uh, head cut that it was getting from the culvert and um, the stream when it surcharged during storms. That has come in really great. It's vegetated, it's growing in, it was a great job. Again, you know, so two things have happened really well. It's just this last spot that needs to put more attention. Wait, that's just what you mean? The, the planting that we just talked about. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. But the color was then under my own DA's so. So, yeah. so you So you gonna do the planting for us? <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, I mean, you came to the site and we had a conversation and, you know, we just made sure it's done right. They well, did it once before. Yeah, it's grown in. It's actually getting vegetated. Looks Things looks are growing good. out of the, uh, the coconut husk log. Chuck. It's, it's, uh, Chuck, may I come in? Great job. Yeah. Um, Mark, I just want to make sure that everybody's really crystal clear, including me, on what is important. When we were on the site, it was the dead and dying stuff it was basically in a line. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's what we're talking about, right? I or are we talking about anything? No, I think it's that whole circle. So here's the granite bounds. There's nothing in the circle. Right here. And it was probably right it along here. So and if this had remember? topography on it, you would see there's a bang right in this area. Okay. So, but there's a whole. The whole front of this has a kind of vinyl matting and it's yeah. mold. And it's just grass. So we're not talking about that. So what we're talking about what's behind it. What's behind I think okay. that front area is going to be a snow storage. Right. Yeah. So I just wanted to make sure that that's what the space we we're uh, discussing. Are there any questions from the community? Do I hear a motion to continue? I make a motion to continue. Second. And you're going to ask for a plan for all these changes. Yes. That we discussed. Um, how does that mesh with this memo from Ryan? Have you had an opportunity to look at that? Yes. yes. No, you have, but I, I'm asking Chuck. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Me. Well, Ryan's not 100% on board with the stormwater calculations. That's something who she's going to have to work with Ryan about. That that doesn't have anything to do with the guardrail or anything. And I think the guardrail, we he said curving a guardrail, okay. so that's not a problem. And we're just talking about plants, so that's also not a problem. So he has to, we have to get a memo from Ryan saying that he's satisfied that you've met all his criteria. But those are. I guess I have to talk to them about Yeah, that's all. Honestly, none of that, none of those make sense. Because uh, EMP was done for the original site already. Otherwise, how the site got approved and how everything got built and how the occupancy was issued. I think he just took this from the boilerplate and put it on. For the sake of three impervi I mean, pervious space, I mean, I haven't talked to him yet, but none of it really makes sense. The only thing I request the commission to decide tonight is the type of pervious material that you like to see there. We can do pervious pavement. We can do gravel, I mean, uh, crush the stone. Whatever you like to see, we will put down. But the issue that he's bringing up, for example, with Tevius pavement, throughout the Commonwealth, there are hundreds of sites, far bigger than three parking spaces, which have been done with Tevius pavement for the last 20, 20 years since this idea came up. It only seems like this one that he's asking you to prove out the calculations for the, you know, if the stormwater works. The rest of them seems like more boilerplate. Yeah. yeah I don't think you're going to have a problem with, with all these. O&M plans, not a problem. 
And as Bill's saying, you're going to have to do it anyway. That's not an issue for you guys. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not a tricky deal. You just need a construction a schedule for work. Right, 72 uh, hour notice and then this one here talks about the fact that they want uh, concrete that you're relying solely on Porteous pavement yes. to manage the storm water and he's just asking for you to do that. I think that you could have a conversation with Ryan sure. and then get through this pretty quickly. Okay. Well, no, I, I have to talk to you. Anyway because you have to uh, obviously, you want to show all the conditions unless he's satisfied, right? Yeah. So I have to, I have to talk to you. Uh, yeah, we all, us three can have a conversation or, or, or whatever. But I, Ryan has, you know, often submits a memo to everybody. And, you know, the funny thing about it is people are actually building here already. So it must somehow work out. So, so I'm not going to face the piece. Yeah, I think that was work. Sounds great. So in terms of pervious pavement type, I, I'm going to leave it up to you to, to provide some example detail from some manufacturer that you're proposing to use. You have a general detail in here, but it's not specific. So you're saying pervious pavement, so show us more information about pervious pavement. Okay. So we have a motion to continue. I just have one question. Are we specifying what kind of guardrail, whether it's the wood or the, the galvanized? At this point, we, we haven't until this point. Do you, I'm, I'm not married to any one of them. I'm open matter? either. I just don't know whether that would have to be you something that would have to go through CPDC. Please, please put allow us to put the uh, timber. Yeah. Uh, I'm both kind of nice, good yeah. looking timber. I mean, no. for an interstate highway on a small cafe. It has to look like the picture I had. <laughs> right? Did you oh, see? Oh, you mean the layout? It it has to, no, that's like dirty. Oh. See that there? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> not not yeah, like thin post, yeah. Yeah, I thought you wanted in red. I said, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. No, that's the standard. That's the standard. The and, the yeah. And, uh, yeah, no, that's it's fine. Great. Okay. Yeah. Great. I'm good with that. Uh, me too. I just didn't know whether that would have to go back to CPDC in order for them to. They they closed. They approved. Okay. They, they approved so they. It. I was told. Um, but they wanted us to look at it. Okay. Yeah. By Andrew this afternoon right. that uh, we're supposed to get kind of continue from here. So, right. which is fine. I mean, they're closed. Yeah, the, the decision already got reported at the South Middle Okay, do I have a motion? I already made a motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Thank yeah. you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, the notices of intent for uh, 1503 Main Street have been continued. Um, However, I believe we um, continue with the request. And that request was for us to get together and come up with a plan about any gift of land that we might approach the owner with and um, for us to agree on what that is. So the Trails Committee are here and the Reading Overland Trust are here. And we're going to be talking about a plan that we've got. Plan for land. Thanks for coming. Thanks for waiting it out. For business. It's a discussion. It's open meeting, I guess. I'm not is reading that any notice of intent stuff. Okay. It, it is an open meeting. I don't think we do. It's, just, it's a yeah, because we're talking about it's a discussion about what we want, and then we're going to go talk to the applicant well, afterwards. And we're not going to talk to the applicant. We're not going to talk. It, it's yeah. it's um, well, let's talk about this. We, we are going to be discussing parts of the project. If we're going to so. discuss mm -hmm. the project, I think we need to open so. this, this meeting, whether or not.
Oh, okay. Um, yes, so your part discretion. Project yeah, is I'll let you decide, Becky. Oh, let's open it. <laughs> Just in case. It's open. Okay. There we go. It's a public meeting. It's open. Okay. Did you get that? Okay. <laughs> You're on, Kim. I am Kim Schwartz, the GIS administrator for the town. Um, and I was asked to put something up, make a suggestion as to uh, where what land might be donated to see the Reading Open Land Trust. We have a trust people here. Um, or the town is uh, Bear Meadow is adjacent to this property. So this is the uh, Proposal for 1503 Main Street. The well, so you've seen plans for lot A and lot B. Lot B is this, and what I'm showing is unchanged from what the applicant has suggested. Lot A is the remainder of this, all the way back here, and this. So what I've done is draw a couple. So did you get that? This is all lot A. Okay. Um, and what what you see here is a couple of plans and then um, some GIS stuff. So the stone walls you see are from the GIS. Um, you see that I found a plan that has the vernal pool on it, so put that in there. This is from the lot A and lot B plans. Uh, and then you can see like the Matera cabin down here, for example. So it's kind of a hodgepodge, but you uh, need all that good information. Um, so, the easier decision for me was to, so if you, this is, uh, can we see that a little bit more, Chuck? Can we zoom out just a tiny bit? Yeah. All right, so there's your locust map. This is the property we're talking about. This is Fairbanks Marsh, land owned by Reading Open Land Trust, all of this. And this is Bear Meadow over here. Um, so this part of Lot A goes way up into the middle of Fairbanks Marsh. If you're out there, it's one big marsh um, it's often standing water. It's an old cranberry um, bog. Um, you know, I talked to the woman once whose family ran the bog. It hasn't been maintained. Um, and it's not great cranberry picking out there anymore, but we have done it, and uh, uh, that's pretty pretty special. Anyway, so I, th I first would propose that the whole bog goes back to the, you don't, this piece be donated to the Reading Open Land Trust so that the whole uh, Fairbanks Marsh is, is one unit controlled by the same organization. And uh, I should also say that I haven't talked to Reading Open Land Trust about this. I mean, I, I have a little bit, but you know, this, this is just my idea to put some, at Chuck's request, to put something out there. Um, also, the Trails Committee hasn't met on this. Um, so again, just my idea. We've got members of both groups here that can, can chime in. So there's a stone wall here. Uh, in the GIS, it shows the stone wall ending there, and there's a stone wall here. Um, I think the stone wall is actually continuous there. This is just a break in the stone wall where the carts probably went out into the marsh. Um, so this piece, if you go from here north, goes from the, the point of the, just a shape point on lot B to the end of the stone wall. And the idea there, in my mind, is that property lines, if they follow a feature like a stream or a stone wall, they're more likely to be respected. Um, and also it's almost surely a historic stone wall. Probably um, bound the upland from the marsh, maybe to keep the sheep out of the of marsh or something. Um, so that, that's the first part of the proposal, donate, asking the applicant to donate that land at the Reading Open Land Trust. And then the second part was to protect some of this piece to protect the vernal pool, to provide some wooded buffer for the trails in Bear Meadow. Um, and that's really it. So there's the vernal pool. This is from a previous plan that's a 100-foot buffer. So I put this in that's roughly a 200-foot buffer. There's a, a dike back here and a, and a break in the stone wall, so a nice, there's a, a spur trail here, you don't really see it, but people do go down there to check out this uh, vernal pool. So one can imagine a trail that goes down here and then out that dike, so there might be some trail opportunities here. Um, but I wouldn't over-argue that case. I think if the commission were to suggest that the applicant donate some land or, or offer conservation restriction, I would think that your primary concern would be protecting the vernal pool. The wetlands line, 
comes across here to right about here. Um, walking out, well, this looks more, well, it's, it's wooded wetlands. All of this is wooded, really. That's a suggestion. And this, again, this, I drew this line just to go from that visible point on the stone wall down here to what I thought was a visible point on the stone wall, but getting, Will and I were out there um, last weekend, and this is just an artifact of the GIS. So uh, this is, you go out there in Bear Meadow now, see the stone wall, see the survey marks all along there, here, 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 here. It's, it's really easy to see in the field. Um, but where, if, if you were to ask for some land back here, where this la line goes, um, you know, I would defer to the commission or maybe some other members of, uh, of the trails committee would uh, have uh, on the thing there. Um, I have two questions on this. On the, on the lower right hand corner of that map, yep. uh, within the 200 foot line around the vernal pool, what's that small tri white triangle that's so, down there? So what you're seeing is slop in the GIS. So um, the, the lots in the GIS or parcels in GIS were drawn from old mylar plants or inked by hand. At some point, those were didn't made it into you know maps on the computer. So what you're seeing here, and it's less visible, but it's also here, is um, where the GIS differs from the the surveyed plan. Okay. So this surveyed plan may have been rubber sheeted a little, but honestly, I have better faith in that. So I am really using their plan. Um, and this point here, I can confirm in the GIS. So I basically brought their plans in with some known points there and there. We still, this is more accurate, the stone wall. Okay. I don't know what this is. I mean, there's a stone wall there, so it's been used as a property line, but it's, it's an artifact. The second question is, is, is near where the driveways uh, come in off of Main Street. You have that angle there. Why, why yes. was that, yeah, why wasn't that? Kind of drawn that's the applicant. Out. That's some um, uh, what the applicant suggested is lot B, and I couldn't tell you. Um, I can see this. They're wrapping this because there's a septic system septic, here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Septic system here. Um, yeah. But that I I don't know. It's there. So did he segregate the mash from the rest of the rest of it? Why was that line in there? Would you be this? Yeah. I have no idea. I, I it would be. I can't tell you. This line was in the original. Yeah, so so again, lot B is unchanged. That's absolutely what the app Are there slot A? And then and the whole rest of the lot. So I, the lines I put in there are just these. Right, so lot A was the rest of it. Yeah. So this isn't a sur survey plan. It's a GIS overlay. So right? what you see in... <coughs> Both of these lines here, but so the original lot A and lot B are from their engineered plan. I brought okay. in the GIS <coughs> in the right spot, and I'm confident of its location based on a couple points I can check in the field, and that I have confidence in the GIS. So you're seeing a lot of stuff there, but I am confident in the outer lines of and of, of uh, A and B. Okay. Um. I'm also confident with the location of the vernal pool. We went out there. I like the that. fact that there's going to be protection of, of the vernal pool, and that's kind of where my focus would be. Um, by your uh, sectioning off section, yeah, yeah, lot A, and I don't, I don't know if everything is fine with lot A once it's it's divided from a zoning standpoint. I think that would be a concern of, of the applicant or the owner, um, and I, I guess I would encourage some discussion. Right, so uh, th here's, so the, um, this lot is split by zoning, it's 20,000 square foot feet in this area, and then the back side of this lot is 40,000 square feet zoning, which is just under an acre. So just by chance, this ended up being at about an acre and a half. So, um, and then there's also some rules about what you can put a circle of a certain diameter. Um, from working with this stuff a lot, I'm pretty comfortable with this, but yeah, obviously it needs to pass zoning. Um, the other thing, just looking around this whole part of town, there's very few lots that are that size or larger. Lots tend to be 
around an acre and 40,000 square foot zoning. That's not to say that the applicant wouldn't much rather sell a two, two acre lot than a one acre lot. I don't know. And I guess I've had some discussions with Chuck and I guess and Chuck, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but if if some of this goes to the town of Reading, it has to go through town meeting. It has to be approved. Wow, I don't know, and I didn't think to ask one of the signs. But, lines, but so um, the Reading Open Land Trust is actually a little bit more of a fluid process than it would be if, if we were to take this piece. But I love the fact that the Vernal Pool is going to be protected why why might we not consider that to be all reading open land trust we get along so so either way so okay. everything <laughs> though is able to sell land at, at some times. Didn't you sell a piece on Scot Scotland Road? Yeah, we got rid of a very bad piece, a very small piece, and it probably should have been accepted on the other side. And uh, we couldn't get the neighbors to stop dumping. They kept costing us who were responsible. They would dump. We would have to leave people there. We would have to go up. And see. So the neighbor next door was interested in acquiring it. Typically, the deed is written though such that your lands um, are protected in perpetuity. It depends on who's using the land. The property that pays the land, we have a provision in the in the uh, deed that clearly states that you can open space. I think we offered it to the town and they had no interest in the population at the time. So that sounds similar. I like the idea of that. Uh, uh, talking, having a regular trust talking with the uh, applicant. 
the north piece and then protecting the Merle Pool. I think it makes a lot of sense. Just make, maybe make this line be the, you know, if you can get, if you can get that far, then uh, that line becomes make that adjustable. And I'm not the applicable. So I apologize, but I'm going to ask this, this stupid question. I, I think it's a great idea. I think I, I just I concur with Becky. I like the idea that we're protecting the Verner Pool. Uh, why are you asking us? Just out of why here, or, you know, or, or where does it go from here? I mean, you, it needs to be a conversation with the, the applicant. Yeah. At the last meeting, you, so you weren't at the last meeting. Yeah. We asked the applicant about land and a donation of some of this land that looked like they weren't going to use it. And the applicant consultant told us to come up with a plan. And uh, Will Finch said that there was someone in town that could put a plan together. And that's how we got volunteer. here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Just like you were volunteered to get something up on the screen. Right? So, okay. so, so, so what, thank you. That, that, that's exactly what I need to was brought up in the meeting. All right. No, that's exactly what I need to know. Thank you. And I yeah, think you don't volunteer we're, enough. What we're yeah. looking at yeah. here is, and I'm trying to put myself in the, in the, I mean, I think that this was drawn by someone who put themselves in the land trust in the conservation cap. <laughs> when you. <laughs> But to put yourself in the homeowner cap, and I know that there's hunting out there, and sometimes you can whether it's allowed or not. There's hunting out there because I've seen uh, many blinds out in this area. The current uh, yeah. previous homeowner. And we went there for our site walk. I think there was a deer hung <laughs> off from a tree. <laughs> yeah, I could, I could smell the jerky. So I, I think that they're going to ask for a little bit more buffer, even though it's into the marsh a little bit. Um, if and I wouldn't be surprised by that. And maybe. Maybe they would get into well, but so they created this line here, though, right? I mean, this is the one they this showed. Theirs, yeah. yeah, and the, this is, I mean, if I can remember correctly, this is the floodplain line. This is maybe the wetlands line here. Then you've got that would be thirty-five feet right there. I wouldn't be surprised if they want they want more space here to, to create, and, and which I, I think is what. And to be honest, I think what you want to fight for is what you want to fight for is you know something that's tangent to that radius there right, at the very least to provide that protection. <laughs> How much more land than one and a half acres would they be looking for? I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm just we don't trying know. to know. Uh, no. Yeah. yeah. It's well, it's not, it's not that they're looking for it, it's what they already have. Yeah, it is. <laughs> We're looking at <laughs> what they're <laughs> not ours. It's right. their land, not, not they, anyone what, else's. Do we think <laughs> they might not be willing to give up, and what do we feel like we really want to push for? And I think at the very least, I think we want to, I, I, I would choose, we want to push for something that at least is tangent to that, that uh, circle, because yeah. that, that provides a good buffer to the runner pool. But, but, the, yeah, the but the if they're amenable to go yeah, as far as the question was why is, is conservation involved? I think your support, even if it en ends up being a running open land trust, it's doing the ask. I think your support is key. Yeah. I and mean, your concern, for you, you can make the argument that to protect this marsh, let's have a, a definable border, you know, property line, and you know, let's make it up a floodplain line, perhaps. But I, I really like the idea. I like storm walls. They're great property bonds. And I'm not from Reading, but um, one of the things that I've enjoyed about coming to New England is the respect for you know, generations before us, following through, sort of in the, the intent. Uh, and I like the way uh, in this map that Kim has done is that you know the plots follow existing stone walls. And there's a, you know I've learned to think to recognize that around your stone walls and creeks and stuff like that, it means something. So. Uh, I'm, I'm, I would think that one of the one other ask that might become come back from the people that own this property or developing this property is is if there would be any willingness from the Reading Open Land Trust to actually uh, establish and survey markets that would delineate any property that would be donated to the Reading Open Land Trust. So that's maybe a, a question that the Open Land Trust trustees may want to kind of bat around and think about that should that question come to the trustees yeah, so good, good point. Here would be, uh, yeah. 
but I mean, if you had, you know, had surveyed and they put in, you know, monument markers and things like that, that, del that actually delineated the, the boundary between what was donated and what was not. So I think that that might be something that may be a little bit more palatable for those people that are donating the land um, and, and also the people that would be buying those homes, that they know that, yeah, there's a boundary that's been established. So. say that that dividing line between lot a and the, the where the house is and the one between so the lot between the house and the vernal pool yeah I see a lot I see that as being like a final kind of discussion point if if the 
owner is interested in that, that that would be the final point. And I'm in agreement. I'd love to protect that vernal pool, and if possible, the wetland or the upland to provide some sort of trail buffer. I mean, half of that lot to the right that's bordering the vernal pool, more than half, about two thirds of it is wetland. Yeah, the you know, so so the so really, the usable land in that, you know, from a you know human perspective, is right. is only a, a very small, like a third or a quarter of the actual lot. And I think it might be important to point that out if you know if they want to take a little bit more of upland, or maybe lose a little bit more wetland on the existing house lot A. You know, maybe that, I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. Depends on how Yankee they are. Don't ask an yeah. old Yankee. It yeah. wouldn't give you a, a, a landscape in spade full of dirt as a giveaway. So you have to remember that, you know, someone else owns this property. Well, I'd appreciate whoever talks to the owner, to somebody who has a prior relationship with them, and they could build on that yeah, that's and move this forward. That's yeah. what, yeah, we need to discuss that. So Maureen talked, I was talking to Maureen about this when they were first bringing it in. Um, but it, it sounds like, uh, Joe, you're going to be talking to the to the owner. So I I should not say anything to Maureen. You'll present this plan to the owner. Maureen is the consultant that will talk to the developer. Who, no, it was just Maureen. Norse Norris Environmental, yeah. So she's the one that said, put the plan together and I'll bring it to this developer. Um, okay. Ben Ring, Main Street. Just. I hear what you're saying about this, you know, being sort of an axis of negotiation. But again, to my road, if I about walls and stuff, it's like this is sort of, you know, this is, this is a wall and this is a wall, so this isn't completely arbitrary. Yeah. I think. But when it comes right down to it, it doesn't matter what I, right. <laughs> what I think. Or what we think. <laughs> thank Whoever you for pursuing this. Thanks. Thank you for taking this on. Yeah. And hopefully, you know, so I don't, do we know what happens next? No, what, what well, Maureen, Maureen's going to take this plan to, to, no? No, it sounds like Joe is, he'll talk to me, but it does sound like he's just going to go directly to the owner. Okay. This is Chris, like, and, and, and see what can happen. Okay. Yeah. I thought you just said Maureen was going to present the plan to the owner. No, she doesn't know the owner. She knows the developer. So that's, no. I mean, let's, let's. Oh, yeah. So she you know is the developer and we were kind of working through Maureen through the developer. The developer got back to us and said, present something that I can see so I have an understanding of what you're asking for. So that's where we got in that direction. But you know, the owner of the property is is, is in the estate. I, I don't have the material in front of me, but it it's it's the Grissics. So yeah. that's really who you want to have some That's where you want to have the conversation and, and with so the yeah, I mean, yeah. right. you, We want to make sure that the applicant is on board for up with it because otherwise it's no there might the be owner. A, but the, be the owner is the right person to talk to. You know what I mean? Like there might be already a deal on the table, so it might be back to the back to the developer. Yeah. I mean my other my other thought on this is making whatever the donation is to one end I think we all agree on that. Yeah. 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 I think this is a starting point. Presentation. Yeah. I think we agree. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank, Thank you guys. so much.
pretty sure it's the same guy. It's like it's creepy. This wife was a bit Oh, that, I thought that's um, Joe's brother. I thought that was your person. I don't know. I still don't know. Maybe it is. Could it be a recognition in you? How? It's a TV. Okay. That's Tom Connery. And who, what is he doing? He's the guy that's developing the uh, old post office. He's the clerk of the works for that job. So we don't need Facebook. Huh. We should need me. <laughs> All right. Um, Chuck, anything on Redding Woods? He hasn't got back to you, right? No. Okay. No, there was a, there was a few things. Um, that, that we wanted, and I, I feel strongly that we can ask for those extra additional bounds. I didn't see where, Are we gonna have unless we're tied to the plan, but. Could you, could you go back to the original plan to see if that was some kind of a conservation easement or something where that the oak tree was? Where they came around you know, the they corner, go around like came this around the shop end corner of, of the uh, building? Building seven. It, the only the plan that I saw and I looked at it quickly this morning, it said tree to remain. Hmm. That's that's all the protection it got. Okay. So there really was no reason why those cement bounds yeah. could have just gone right straight away past the corner that's, of that that's building. What I was thinking. No. Unless the management didn't want them. <laughs> Maintain oh. <laughs> well, it'd be easier for them to maintain if they've gone straight rather than around the way that they did. Uh. Um. All right. Um, we've got a continuation on Green Street and um, Friends and Family Day. You did a, a, re a debrief, but. Got well, I did a debrief at a site visit, and not not at the meeting. I was oh. not at the meeting. So um, I was there from quarter of eleven to two thirty three o'clock. I think it was. Um, we got a lot of people to the table. We we're right next to the trails committee, uh, which was a, a nice fit. Most yeah. people that said, "Oh, I would love to help out and get involved," and then they realized that they wanted to help out the trails committee. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, and then it seemed like there were going to be a lot of people that wanted to talk to Chuck afterwards, but uh, we, we lured people over with lollipops. Awesome. Um, <laughs> that sounds good. Um, but it was a good day. Uh, we got, I think, a decent amount of names in there for uh, the Matera Cabin raffle. So I'll let you no. pick out a name. All right. Oh, boy. No peaky. I think what, I did put what, Chuck's uh, name in at one point I'm, to I'm make it look like there were people that had sign up. Is there anything with us? No, that's just an example certificate. So of all the hundreds of applicants. So what's this? Uh, what's the raffle for? It's, it's for four, uh, four hours. Four free hours at Matera. Free use at Matera Cabin. Matera Cabin. Free rental. For good for a lifetime. A right? year. <laughs> Only good for a year. Okay. Coupons can't expire. Because we can't that. do you this the, forever. You call the conservation office to uh, make your appointment or make your uh, schedule for your time, birthday party, whatever. Can you read the winner? Michael Kamadiko. It's a 401. I know, actually, I know who that is. I went to college. What's 401? <laughs> 401 to Rhode Island. Okay. I, he went to URI. With, oh, okay. With, there's no drinking at the cabin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Unless we're invited. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do happen to know one of the property abutters. Yeah, I think we do now. <laughs> so I guess we can hunt from there, though, right? <laughs> so uh, who's going to call? You want to call Michael? Yeah, sure. Can I get the uh, name? Yes, no. Chuck, but we're we still waiting for an asbel that that indicates the, the Green Street the Green Street that concrete pad. Talk to him today, and he's just having a hard time dealing with his uh, his uh, survey person who went out there again and and then developed a new plan that was missing additional stuff. Okay. So they're back to the drawing board, and they'll be at our next meeting on the twenty fifth. 
And then Johnson Woods. Um, so after a little bit of phone tag with um, developer, I forget his name, sorry. Um, the developer called me back and said, it wasn't me, it was the condo guy. So I said, well, get me a name and a number so I can talk to him. And so um, I got his name and number, and that was over through before and after 4th of July. And we, we've been playing phone tag ever since. Just call me, I'll come out. You know, and the last call was, I, he called me this morning, I called him early afternoon, and I said, instead of calling me back, see if you can make it to town hall tonight around eight. Mm -hmm. And just, because we'd like to meet with you, we've got to talk about what's happened and what are the next steps. And so that's, it's a lot of phone tag. Well, do you think he's, uh, do you think that you're getting an honest uh, back and forth dialogue started or is it something that we need to take an additional step? Um, give me another couple of days <laughs> and uh, I'll see. I have some availability the next day or two, so I'll just use my free time to try and coordinate with him. Mm -hmm. And I'm away. I leave the 20, I leave, so I'm not going to be around at the next meeting. All right. Yeah. So, um, so I have next week open to continue to follow up. And, and if nothing has happened by the time I leave, well, give all I, the I would encourage you guys to back to me yeah. yep and I'll call but if by the end of next week if Anika hasn't done this can um, I think a formal letter to mm -hmm. him well I was gonna say in, in this you've been talking to him so we could skip the letter and go right to the enforcement sure. to, to and I, I'm not sure how that works because I understand that the board has been appointed by the developer mm -hmm. so they might be connected somehow but, um, you know, you could write the enforcement to the developer naming that board member or vice versa. Yeah, I don't know how that all works. So. Did, did but somebody come It's a step. I need to do certain steps before we can get to that finding process. And, okay. And, and it's the phone call. It's the enforcement letter. It's the second one. And then the fine. Okay. The property Management Committee, that's what it's called. And it is it is appointed by the developer. And they're just uh, the folks that. There are people who live there. Yeah. yeah. So it's it, it looks like uh, a homeowners association kind of committee, and they have similar responsibilities. But they uh, uh, but we do not have sufficient population in the development yet. The, All the, right. the development contract says we have to have seventy five percent occupancy before we can have our own actual association. So you were saying that the, I, was it Frank Hart that you talked to? It was Larry Healy. I don't know him. Um, but but the person you've been had to contact since is the condo with this condo owner? Or are you still working with Glover? What's the name you gave me? Bob My phone's Gargano. Bob Gargano. And it is somebody who lives at 39? No, he's, no, he's, he was working for the developer, right? I'm sorry. That's that's just my question. So who, who, who is we're talking actually about Bob with? Gargano? Right now, he is, is the company developing the site. Right. And then you got to the person that actually had the tree cut down. According, so I called Bob and I said, "What's happening with the tree cuttings out there? I, we need to talk about it. It's an issue. We need to do something about it." Um, and he came back all strong and said. I'm always following all your orders and all your rules and all, and so he, he just came back with a lot of bustle and I just said, listen, we got to get to the bottom of this. I need to know who was in charge, who cut the tree, who do I talk to about getting it, you know, who's responsible, who do I talk to about getting it fixed? And he goes, I think I know, I think I know who did it. He goes, oh, let me get all you back. And so then he gives me this guy, Larry Healy's name and number. So we don't necessarily think that's the so the 
association, but oh, it's potentially it's just a homeowner. I or, don't uh, know. And that, okay, so that's where I we are. I we don't know yet. I haven't had a discussion with uh, it. Uh, okay. Well, that was always the question from the very beginning, to, in my mind, was some random condo owner goes out and cuts a tree down. It's just, well, that's I, awfully I'm, fishy to me, but, but, I'm but we don't know swimming in murky yet. water, so whatever it information is. you can give me to help me well, unfortunately, navigate, I'd appreciate it. So. Um, unfortunately, all I can do is confirm for you dealing with them the way you've been dealing with them is pretty typical. So, that's, what, that's what Jeff yeah. told me. Yeah. So I was just So that's like, about all I can tell you. Okay. Yeah. okay. They are, uh, and especially if you want to deal with Ted Moore himself, who's the, the, the Glover head, etc. Ted is uh, almost always out of town whenever you need something. Okay. But Frank Hart is the person we always have dealt with. For for um, just for any property management, management. property and etc. Frank Hart, H A R T. I, I don't know. You know, maybe personnel has changed, or it's been a year or so since we talked to him. Okay. Yeah. It's, uh, okay. Well, well, thanks for that. I mean, I don't know. So I'll talk to Larry. I don't know if Larry's just is truly the right contact or if it's a stall. I don't know. I'll find out. Eventually. Okay. We'll go scooter in over there. Put my smile on, say, looking for Larry. <laughs> looking for Larry. Gotta talk about some trees. Uh, we have MACC dues. We do. 747. Don't pay them. Do we uh, use MACC? <laughs> I'm sorry. Rarely. In a pinch. Did, did uh, I sent that out? Did I send out the part about the annual environmental conference and all the classes and yeah, all that? Yeah, I've got a sheet on that. I noticed the that you sent that out some of the uh, calendar. Somewhere. I don't know what it is. I guess we're going to send it out. Yeah. What, what are the uh, computer dues? Lessons? What is the sheet at the pay for them, though? Oh, so the MACC is the, the Massachusetts the Association of stuff. Conservation you Commissioners. Oh, some of the webinars you have to pay for. If we had a union, oh. that would be it. So but since we're paid, not enough to unionize. It's just a support organization. They run annual or semi-annual conferences yeah. and um, education and training workshops and and classes and their a technical help and their legal help and they advocate at the state level. Um, so they're so it's essentially the town running pays the dues. Right. right. So each one of us um, is eligible for membership. Ah. To be on to be part of the mass MACC organization. So what is it? Do we actually utilize them? Yeah, you could, if you got questions, you can call them up. They have a library in Belmont. Yep. Yep. They, everything's online too. I mean, you can. Is, there's a handbook that's online. That you uh, permission for to go in and look through the handbook and you know you can look up situations I guess my question is is there any reason we would consider not continuing our membership you're, you're you were involved with Boxborough you were you're involved in Arlington is everybody that you you know are most commissions involved it's it's more than going to the conferences and how much you call them? It's it's yeah. the one organization that's always out there fighting for yeah, you know, the wetland you, you and for legislation. Site. So for, for that yeah. reason, this is your lobby. This is our lobby on that's for true. wetland. It is our lobby, but it's weeks. also because we only it's also we only right. week of in tricky yeah, technical right. situations. Yeah. It's also been our free yeah. legal support. In, Rather for a couple of situations. We all go? Because I was planning on. Um, so free technical support. Yeah. Especially so when you the DP we Yeah, we can all riders. go, or if you can't yeah, make it, kind you of can go on your own right? at another time. Oh. Yeah. Did they help us yeah. with our. Knock on the door and introduce yourself. Yeah, sure. I'm just having a conversation. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's all. Should we get the lay of the land? It's easy to control you guys, and as you control. I'm looking what I can do about that. We're thinking of having She's the right. chair. We're thinking about it. So so we're not about sure it. yet, though. What? Just to have what? one conversation at a time. We're just thinking maybe that's going to be our. Well, it's, kind of, it's winding uh, down. 
Let's get up. Let's get back to one Spons conversation. Am I CC? Hey, sir. Treat you know. Well, I suppose so. Come on. Am I CC? We're talking about MACC. So we're going to continue to have our membership there. I propose we pay. I make a motion to pay the bill. Second. All those in favor. <laughs> Okay, so Chuck, the subscription, do you get the login and password for that? Yeah, that's why I know all the answers. I know. That's a kid. Whenever you can share that with us. It's, no, it's just for one member. It's for one It's for one person. I know which seat is yours. I don't know. It's like giving possible. away the... I don't know if it's supposed to work that way. That's case, extra money. Case sensitive. Yeah, it is. I know it's for each person $60 or something. Yeah. yeah, I know it's quite pricey. I know I've worked in other towns, and it's it's a lot less money in other towns, and how they do their calculation has what? to do with me and what? income and all that. Seriously? Yeah, it's not a standard It's not amount. a standard fix. No, it's, 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 it's a it has to do with population, mean income, 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 other yeah. filtering yeah. factors yeah. through there, but um, I know other towns have been two to three hundred dollars cheaper. Sure. Fifty-five dollars. Oh man, I didn't know Some towns are. I didn't know that. Dirt cheap, 150 bucks or so or something. I don't know, maybe, maybe 300. But we're the type of town that can actually afford a conservation agent. So that's <laughs> true. <laughs> that's one of those things you find out when you go to these. Well, no, you know, you know what it is. It's, it's, you know, I get it because they're saying, well, you have a population that can sustain this kind of dues, but you actually have to have the permits and the permits from the state, which they haven't raised the fee for those permits. <laughs> in, I don't know, 100 years. And then, so instead of taking 25% of those permits or 10, now you're, you're now you're at 25 and you're at 35% because, you know, that pool, you know, that doesn't just doesn't keep replenishing no, itself. I mean, there's, di there's different permits. I mean, we have, when we've put in our, now that we've done our minor project permits, we have kind of shifted what people need. There's more minor project permits being used and less um, RDA is right. being used. Right. So. Anything else we need to discuss? I make a motion to adjourn. Yeah, no, no. Give a second here. We haven't Many. seen any many minutes, so. Arcadia Ave. Talk to you about this. Arcadia Ave as the actual number of that site, I believe, is 113 Arcadia Ave. We won't be talking about Porta Potties right now. We're talking about something else. So, um, there was an issue on site today about those, so that's why I brought that up. But that's not what we're talking about. Um, the developer came to me a couple days ago and in our order of conditions, we requested that a certificate, uh, a CR, a conservation restriction, was finalized prior to them getting their building permit. So they've gone through a lot of changes. I don't believe the same owners are own it, and you know, the same builders own it. There's but, but there's been changes, so I don't see the same faces at the at the counter anymore. And they've said, you know, we missed. We missed our deadline. We need to start. That conservation restriction is a three to six month process. And they're asking for you guys to decide on two things. This is a conversation that I was in. They've asked for you to do a deed restriction instead of a conservation restriction. And that could be completed right away. And if you don't accept that, to, which was my suggestion, I asked them uh, that we can move the necessity for a completed conservation restriction to the point where we're uh, signing off on the certificate of compliance. Um, and then when that's completed, we'll sign off on the certificate of compliance, but they should start on their conservation restriction right away. So. Is the offer the same? Yeah, yeah, they're not changing that. Okay. To um, e either or. I would say whatever's easiest. I mean, if they want it. The offer's the same, but it might affect the, 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 it might affect the town differently. The town wants the full benefit of open space and conservation restriction. And if you want to go from the deed restriction, I want to talk to the someone in town to find out if... if do you know anything about that? I, I don't, but uh, I mean, if we may not... 
we made see, it more difficult we to track. See, yeah, we see on our right. maps on the conservation restrictions, restrictions oh. in open space, and they're eliminated from populated area, bringing our bringing numbers down. Right, have to do with affordable housing. Right, a deed a restriction, restriction may not do that, yeah. and this right. is a right. four right. and a half acre lot. Yeah, oh, right. I, I agree with that. So I I would say I would I would amend. The order of can we amend the order of conditions to yeah. put the the conservation restriction forward uh, as a condition of the certificate of compliance? Yeah. Is well, there any danger? And of that's that? exactly what we did with uh, uh, Franklin Street. Okay. So I have no problem with doing that. Yeah, there is a danger. They drag their feet again. Yeah, and we get built again. houses, and they're crying mm -hmm. that they can't. Well, I guess that's my only concern. Is it, so that's that's the downfall, right? Is we give them occupancy, they get in, but they never actually come for a, a conservation cer certificate of compliance, oh. right? That that one project that we dealt with, with the cer certificate of compliance coming back to us, what, 30, 40 years right. later? And but we're just saying there's a $10,000 bond on this. I'm not sure if it could be used to put that deed, not the deed restriction, but the conservation, conservation restriction, restriction in place. And of course, someone's going to have to sign it on their side. But it's been a practice to not hold up um, um, certificate, certificate of occupancy. Can we make both the certificate of occupancy and certificate of compliance? No, I can't get into the building part of it. It would only be the uh, certificate of compliance. I mean, you could you could have an initial step. You could ask that they submit a rough draft to the commission, show that they've hired an attorney to bring this thing forward, and and I mean, you could do something like that. I don't yeah. know what the, what the pieces would be, but I could talk to it's Steve Erickson, so I could talk to Steve and say that we we need some assurance. I think I like that because mm. it seems like. They, they are dragging their feet, and it does take a long time to get these yeah, in does. place. And then the fact that we're not dealing with the same owner anymore, right? Right. So there's loss of continuity a right. little bit there. A little bit of surprise right. about agreed so, terms. I mean, I, I think there was a it was an easy agreement when the initial offer was made. Just as long as the new owner, but but it's the new. Is it the new owner of the property or just the new developer of the property? That that wants to bring this forward? That that the it runs with the land. So um, the conservation restriction has to be granted by uh, the new owner of the property. So that's whoever's going to buy the house, unless it's granted before the, the unless the, the conservation restricted is granted by the developer and is parceled off before the house is sold. They pass on the pay the, the house. So that's something. That's something for a lawyer, not for us. Right. But I, I would, I, I don't have any problem with allowing them to move forward with the building permit predicated on them not having a certificate of compliance before that conservation restriction is granted and filed. So with the occupancy permit they could move in and sell the house and they're all set and the only thing we'd be able to wait for at that time and this has happened before, and we waited 11 years for the Harold Ave property. Right. And the guy finally sold, and well, it, was, it wasn't, it was, a, it was a fight. They move in and they don't care until they right. have to sell. And then they, yeah, yeah, he had exactly. to take care of it before he sold. But was so, the, did you hold a bond on the Harold Ave property? This was before my time. As a matter of fact, the only thing that really changed everything is that someone left and I came in and the guy felt like he could talk to conservation again. Okay. I mean, is it... it but, but even with that, 
as soon as we finalized that C CR, the house was sold two years later. So it was part of his plan, you know, to, to move out. And I think that's that's the only thing we would have over these people. So, I, I mean, maybe a, a two-prong attack where we have, uh, you know, some proof of this process being started. I like that. Yeah. I don't know what that's going to look like, but I will have that conversation. So, yeah, one of the things is, say it, is okay, it takes three to six months. Right. What do you have to do up front, and then are you waiting three to six months to get through or something? And and give us the upfront info so that we know it's at least in the process. It's and I, I just I want to make sure that we can actually hold the bond. Right. For well, that purpose. Right. I think because I did. I, don't know that I think that I did follow. this for you guys. Yeah. I don't know if this helps. The other thing is, is that if let's say that they they give us the the primary steps of doing it, and they don't come through with it, is the ten thousand dollar bond enough to actually Finish. go through the legal process in two, order to finalize that? Two things. I, I don't know how you could do that because you need the landowners approval and signature to close that CR. It's an agreement between two parties. I think the only right. bond so if one party walks away, yeah. it's the unfinished. I think the only thing the bond is, does is that you hold it uh, essentially hostage. Right. You, you don't get it back until this is the And it's just a bond. Completely. I mean, a $10,000 bond, what's that, $200 a month? Mm. I guess it would bother. Not it would bother me after a while. I don't know. Yeah. So anyways, this is the process that you would have to take. This is what they're talking about. This is why they can't do it immediately. You get an application, you have a, you have a plan of land, you have a field report, you have USGS, you have uh, municipal certification, you have state review, uh, then our review, then modifications if necessary. You've been involved in all this. Review from the EOA. Can and they Del Bono. show us they've submitted it to the state or like yeah. what's it's three to six months yeah. and is that the, right. the waiting period can they can we won't issue the building yeah. approval by the secretary of state until <laughs> oh come until it's been <laughs> issued to the state Return. and then let them do the rest there's always corrections yeah, I, see so I see another I potential fly in the no ointment if it's where it says inter in interstate agencies, is any portion of that 4.2 4 acre lower meadow within the state highway right away? You know how the state highway has, you know, a certain number of feet on either side of the highway? Is any of that lower meadow land within that 200 foot extra it would buffer seem like area? It, it may be. But I think it might. I, I think the the other town's property line is prior to the highway. It is. So then I would say no. Okay. So th there's a lot to do. So all right. So let's let's see what we can do with with kind of getting some um, first starter starting point for this. Yeah, I, I think talk to Steve and understand what the process is, and if they can, there's a step to show us that they have submitted it then I would be fine with issuing a occupancy, knowing that it's been submitted, but it's in essentially waiting. You mean a certificate of compliance, where you can't hold up the occupancy? So isn't that what our order of condition says? No, it says certificate of compliance. It's, it says something about that we'll sign off on the occupancy, but that is, we've decided to hijack the building department by doing that, and that just doesn't work. So I'm not saying we, we didn't put that together. It's in there as something old from the past, but it's not been approved by anybody else. So when I got here, I talked to Glenn, and he said, look, I'll give you a you know, I'll give you a couple of weeks, but he goes, but I, you know, basically, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hold up someone going in because of something outside of the house. Well, then I guess you're telling me we don't really have any leverage on what we say. Just the certificate of compliance. So we are talking about giving up the certificate of compliance without this finished. No, we're gonna uh -huh. say we won't sign the certificate of compliance without this finished, but that doesn't mean people can't live there for 50 years. But it sounds like you're telling me that we don't have leverage on that anyways. Other than the bond. 
other than the bond, but the bond is tied to mostly to erosion control, and I don't even know if we could use it to create a uh, CR. I guess my question is, I, I didn't understand this. I, I, I thought we did have the ability to hold up the occupancy. Uh -huh. If we don't have ability, then what's the discussion even about? We don't really have any leverage until the, until the certificate of compliance. No. So let them do whatever they want to do. It'd be great that they show us. Let them do whatever they well, want. We, we, How do you go for we have no leverage and we'll let them do it? Why don't you just go back to like, look, let's stick to the, the so original. Them, I don't understand your two-step process, though. What are they going to give us before the occupancy permit? They can get this thing started. They can get all the way to the point where it's reviewed by the state. They need to start it. But the other thing is just that it's Like, if they don't do that, can, are yeah. you going to hold up the occupancy permit? No, no but Chuck's I can hold up the saying, building permit. Well, I don't. I don't but actually know if I hold up the building permit. But it's a given in the first that's place. How, how can you? Permit. How can you hold up a building permit for something that's being donated to the town? I don't think you can do that. But I'm in favor of Chuck mentioning it and oh, saying, yeah. "Hey, don't yeah. forget, you had this on the table. This is part of your order." What, mm -hmm. When would this? Like, why don't we get that started? Dave, I don't see the connection between those two things. This is we have an order of conditions. We approved a project based on a slate of conditions. That was one of them. Right. If that didn't exist in that slate of conditions, we wouldn't have approved the project. So they can't take it away. They have to give it to us, and it is important. If I had to hold up the, the building permit, it would, because that project doesn't go forward unless we got this CR. It, it's, it's How do you hold up a... For someone giving it to you, it sounds like they're not doing it. They only, I'm not, I, I would answer that by saying I'm not sure they're going to give it to us because they were supposed to move on it before now. I don't, I, I would. I, I don't see how you can make a, you know, it's like the same thing at the at that, that path that's at the end of the development off Franklin Street. So you're saying if that guy didn't say, well, I will give you an easement path at the end of the cul-de-sac on Franklin Street, um, and, and he says, no, I don't want to do that, you'd say, well, you're not getting any building permits? I don't think he can do that. No, we do that during the we do that during the order of conditions process. That is a condition that he's agreed to. If he can't if he can't live up to the order of conditions, then you, you know we're talking violations. We're talking things like that. He, he can't get a certificate of compliance. Right. I, I can see if you know if they're not in compliance with some kind of conservation bylaw or state conservation regulation. But there is no state bylaw or regulation that says the person that's developing a piece of property has to give land away to the town or give a, a, a path restriction to the, the trails committee. That's there not is. part it's of the law. Of conditions. So it's in the order only, of conditions, but it, again, it's a give. No state law about that. So with that's the Riverfront right. River right. Act, you yeah. need to do mitigation for the work or the disturbance in the, in the Riverfront area. His mitigation was this certificate of compliance. So I've just tied it into the Wetlands Protection Act. Okay. Because so, it's in the riverfront. Well, and then and our bylaw allows mitigation for wetlands. It's mitigation. Oh, it's mitigation. You're right. It's mitigation. But it's a bylaw thing. So we are covered by the bylaw and the state in the riverfront, but just this, the bylaw if it's a wetland. My ears? Uh, My head. I've lost track of the question. <laughs> Why are we talking about this at all? What is it that because we're Because it's part to of the order of conditions. It's something that they were supposed to do. They okay. didn't do it. But they then were. next is, well, what are we supposed to do? What do you, what, because I've lost track of how I'm supposed to think about this now. Yeah. So, what do we, does anyone have a great idea to <laughs> get these so, guys to? So, get on board so, yeah to summarize well, well, so do that's you want to have an are. informal that's meeting at we Town need Hall? them we we ask them to <laughs> have this thing ready for us to sign prior to asking for a building permit mm -hmm. they they haven't done it and they want to push it off till the certificate of compliance which is at the end of their project mm -hmm. and then at that point we started talking about all the possibilities that could happen and how much leverage we have over them at that end of the process rather than at the beginning. And there's, there's you know. Yes, and I've gotten the, the, the drift that it's pretty hard to do it at the end. So yeah. 
I'm looking for the commission to say something about how they want to proceed. And what I've heard was go back to their consultant who's going to handle the CR and say we need something in advance to, to let us know that you're, you're moving forward. I, I, yeah, I'd like to see that it's been submitted to whoever they're submitting it to. And if it's in the review period, I'm fine with that. And then the, the, final, com the final completion, we will not issue the certi certificate of compliance until that process is actually completed. But right, because in other words, if the house takes seven months to So you want to get it to D? Review by the EEOA? Yes. It doesn't what's, seem... What's staff review? Executive that's just Office us. of Environmental. That's us? No, no, it's the oh, federal. It's state. That's, sorry, state, state, state review. It's a state. That, that's state where, review? That's where I want to get it to. I want to get it to B. I want to know that it's at B prior to building. No, 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 no. That's, that's, no, it has to go down here. This is this is this is the people that will tell us whether it works out. Is is staff review kind of like somebody coming into you and saying, "Does this look right?" And you say, "No, the commission will never accept that. Go go back and change it." Yeah, we're we're going to be yeah. doing this staff review throughout the process. It needs to go to the EEOA or. E O E E A. So it gets renamed all the time. I don't know what. So, yeah. so and then and does I'm not saying I need anything back from them, but it has to be sent to them. Yeah. So so we get a draft language, right? Does it go to the town first? I mean, our legal review has to. No, no. We, they would only review it at the very very end. It, so it goes so to the state. But you're yeah, saying though, if it takes four months to get this. Because it sits Done. in the state for if it months. The state, but then if, if the house takes seven months to build, we, they could still complete the process it has, it, while they're building the house. Correct. So we are still so we are still doing something about it. Yeah, we're, we're making sure that they're acting right. on it, that they're not just forget, completely right. forgetting about it. It's submitted, and, and the people that take the long yeah. time can take a long time while they're building. Because you mentioned someone took four years to bring it to you. Uh -huh. uh, so what, what happened um, on, a, on a site was... Somebody, Who's so on certificate of compliance, e -E -E -E. a lot of times people they get into the house. That's all they ever care about. They don't care about Plan closing it out. So they never come back to us and say, "Did we do it like we told you we would do it?" But the the only so time that they come back to us is then all of a sudden they want to sell the property, and the bank goes to their due diligence and they say, "Oh, you've got an open order of conditions. You need to close that." Wow. And so. We just had one two years ago that it was 25 years ago that they said, you know, they never closed it out. Uh, and so the, so there was the, something in there that said, you will donate this land. And right. well, did they ever donate the land? But so the developer's putting the homeowner in a risky situation then, right? Or no? If the homeowner wants to flip one year later and sell the house, and they come and say, you have an open... Absolutely. Right? So it's almost like you're, we were talking about it, how do we make them do it? Letting the homeowner know that you're the guy's beating around the bush here. But if you want to sell the house in two years, you can't. Well, ultimately, it's the homeowner homeowner's responsibility. Okay. The, 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 right. Whoever owns the property, and it's not going to it's not going to able to be sold until that's closed. Right. But a lot of homeowners might not overlook that. So this is the so developer wants to get it done in a hurry and then doesn't tell anybody. I know if any of these steps have actually taken place yet. And it sounds like they haven't. It done sounds anything. like none of them. But the the first thing up until up until D doesn't it doesn't look like it. It's, it's, it's like a whole lot of yeah. It's work. nothing. It's so they, the application is not too much. It's the plan they have, field report Steve can do. USGS is nothing. Um, what that is. Yeah. Was I public land holding? I don't know. Well, certification. Uh, staff review. That's. Just full is it the only one in bold is review by EO? Yeah. Well, the thing is, is they've been set up to look yeah. these things over, and they're going to let you know that right. we're about, we will accept this. This land is too small. It's next to the highway, and we right. won't do that. You know, and at that point, we would know. Well, I guess our last opportunity is to just do a deed restriction on this land, um, and we'd have to change our mind. So it would be good to get it to that review, right? Because they'll review it and they'll get back to you and say, this is going to work. 
you know, here's your steps, and, and they, and they yeah. want these things too. It, yeah. This is there. This is a small piece of land, according to them, but we have conservation land right there now. So we have the Longwood Conservation Area, and this is just gonna extend that open space. So it's, it's, it's connectivity, so I don't think it won't go through. Well, and not that this, this may not be a big factor to them, but they could also turn around and say to their neighbors, who might be unhappy that they're building that house there, just turn to them and say, look, I just donated, or I just put a conservation restriction on all of this. You know, I, I don't know for those neighbors who would understand that, it, it might be one of those things that sort of goes, oh, that's actually a good thing that you mm. did that for the place that we love to send our kids to play in the woods. So this looks like Steve's got homework. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Any, any other things? Any other, yeah. other things? Do I have a motion? Move we adjourn. I'll second. All those in favor? Adjourn. We can get out before 10. <laughs> we had to re go through that one more time. All together.